Everybody, what's up? Welcome to the live stream. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Today we are going to be talking about the story of Bad Art Friend. I'm going to say hello to everyone in the chat for a minute. So I think this is how I want to do it. I'm going to start with, I'm going to give an overview, like this whole story is wild. So I'm going to give an overview of the timeline of the whole story and everything that happened. And then after that, we're going to look at the, the we're going to like look at tweets and like we're, we'll go into the drama and shit. We'll like go into the fights on Twitter. And all of that, we'll have a discussion about like what this says about literature and storytelling and who owns what and ownership of intellectual property and what it means for everything and what we can learn from it going forward and all of that stuff. And then that should take like about an hour or so probably. And then after that, I will open it up if people want to like come in and come on the stream and talk. And if no one does, that's fine too. But I've seen a lot of streamers doing like call-in shows and stuff lately so maybe I will like send out the link to join the stream if anyone wants to come into the stream and actually you know discuss your opinions about it live or something so I think that's what we're gonna do uh in just a minute I will say hello to everyone in the chat I'm glad that people have made it I just want to let everyone know um before we get started tomorrow morning on your morning guru on my second channel join us over here there's the link to it right there. Click set reminder. Everybody and their mom has been DMing me to say, you need to collab with Rachel Oates or commenting on my videos. So I made it happen. You guys ask for it. Made it happen. Uh, so this week on Your Morning Guru, we're like last week we studied the good vlog brothers, who's John and Hank Green. And this week we're studying the evil vlog brothers, Jake and Logan Paul. So uh, we're having uh, Rachel Oates on the stream as our guest star tomorrow to talk about the process of reviewing bad YouTuber books and what Jake Paul's book was like and things like that. So please join us over there. You can set a reminder right here. Uh, don't forget to join. We will be there live at 8 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Eastern time for our morning show tomorrow. Uh, so don't forget to check that out. Um, also, I want to thank Pretty Pink Pretty Plow. Yeah. I can't talk. Pink Pretty Flowers for the super sticker. Thank you so much. I really, really greatly appreciate that. I'm going to say hello to everyone, and then we're going to give an overview of everything that happened. We're going to jump into the drama here. Bad Asterisk here. I love it when Bad Asterisk here. I don't know who these people are, but I'm excited to find out. Yes, this story is, uh, I don't know if I would call it like the you guys remember like Bean Dad on Twitter and stuff? This is like the book, the writer in book world, Bean Dad. <laughs> uh, Ink and Grit is here. Hello. Hello, Caffeinated Angel. Maya is here. And I know that Maya has been following the story because she's been replying to me on Twitter and stuff. Zab says there's a lot of misinformation running around on this. I put a post in the Your Morning Guru subreddit. Okay, so we are going to take a look at that. Zab, I really appreciate that you posted that because this story is, has so many wild different angles to it. So here's the post that Zab made in Your Morning Guru. We are going to go through this post because you put a lot of information here and I appreciate that. So after we go through all the stuff, that's going to we're going to go over that in case there's any like misinformation that's out there that needs to be corrected. I very much appreciate you doing that. Um 
Yes, Ink and Grit. Join the subreddit. Guys, join the Your Morning Guru subreddit. We have a lot of fun there. We talk about lots of things. Um, good morning, Grim Goose Girl. Amy Gets Lit is here. Oh, Amy, I'm so glad you're watching this. I was uh, texting Amy all of yesterday while I was reading this article because we both had a lot of opinions on it. Um, so Leah is here. Hello, Leah. Glad you made it. Hello to Joanna Marie Art. I'm glad you're here. I uh, want to make sure I say hello to everyone. Hello to your local nerd. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk. Yeah, bad art friends going around on Twitter and everyone's like, what is this? And I was like at first intimidated because I'm like, I have no idea how I'm even going to dive into this. And then I dove into it and I'm like, oh, shit, this is a whole Netflix special in itself happening before our eyes. I love it. Hello to Cool Gamer. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Lori. Hello, Kelly. Um, okay, RK. Th thanks, bud. Thanks, bud. Um, hello, Genia. Hello, is that uh, Maka? Maka? Uh, however you say it, I'm glad you're here. Nice to see you. Hello, Kate. Um, I'm so glad you made it. Hello to Letty. Letty says Team Dawn. I will say, I'm not going to say whose team I'm on from the beginning because I want to tell it objectively, but I will say because I tweeted this. When I first started the article, I was definitively Team Dawn as she as it said she's raising an elderly pit bull. And I was like, oh my God. I even have my mug here that says must love pit bulls. And honestly, Dawn seems like a very nice person. Um, Cora is here. Hello, Cora. What's up? Uh, Sarah is here. Hello, Sarah. Um, who else do I need to say hello to? Oh my god, we got another super chat. Kate says, My bunny and I are psyched to be live here for a change. Kate, shout out to Kate and her bunny. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. Um, hello to Liv. Hello, Stephanie, Mint Ghost, Meta. Hello, hello, Aiden. Hello, Evie. Hello, we are the Twin Tails. Uh, Soy Verita says Robert Kolker is the real hero of the story because the writing made this so fantastic. Yeah. And you know what? There's a lot of interesting stuff to say about the writer of this article because he's, it's been controversial too, with the fact that people are like, okay, this, the order that he told the story in, he told it in to make the most interesting narrative story, but it also, and we're going to, well, sorry, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that background information on this background information on bad art friend. So what is bad art friend? It is a New York Times article. So this New York Times article came out a couple weeks ago called Who is the Bad Art Friend? I can't pull it up as I don't have a New York Times account. And I guess I used my free articles pulling up other things on streams. Uh, but we will be pulling up a lot of other articles to talk about. And to go over the timeline, uh, we're going to use this blog. Um, but basically, basic overview of the story. This is a story about art, friendship, plagiarism, intellectual property, lawsuits, and the overall snobbery and pretentiousness of literary communities, <laughs> which is very interesting. So uh, we're going to go over the timeline in a second, but a very basic overview of what happened. There are two women involved in this. There is a woman named Dawn and a woman named Sonia. So Dawn and Sonia were both part of these literary groups in Boston. They were both part of the same groups in the same area in Boston. Very basic overview, guys. Dawn one day decides to donate her kidney, not to anyone in particular. She just wants to donate her kidney uh, just to do a nice gesture in case someone out there needs it. So Dawn donates her kidney um, and then creates a Facebook group to give people updates on the surgery and how it's going. Dawn gets to be a little extra with her updates, talking nonstop about it and DMing people to be like, so how do you feel about the fact that I donated my kidney? It seems a little much, but I I'm going to talk about it. I can understand Dawn. I'm going to talk about why in a minute. So she does this. This woman, Sonia, who Dawn considered a friend, one of her fellow writers, was in this Facebook group who saw all of her kidney updates. So Sonia decides that she's going to write a short story about somebody donating a kidney. And the story isn't about Dawn, but she takes a lot of inspiration from Dawn. But she makes the character who donates the kidney not portrayed in the best light. She's portrayed as like this white savior type who's doing it for self-serving reasons and things like that. So she does that. Dawn in the Facebook group posts the letter that she sent to the person that received her kidney because she found out which uh, stranger got her kidney. She sent him a letter. They ended up meeting up and he was very grateful. It was a good story all around. So she posted in the Facebook group what the letter said that she sent to the kidney recipient. Sonia takes the letter and makes that the character's letter who donates the kidney in the, in the short story that she wrote. So she takes the letter directly. 
She changes up a few things here and there, but not enough that it's not immediately obvious what it is. So everybody, all, all the stuff's going in a frenzy. Multiple lawsuits are going on. We're going to talk about the order of the lawsuits that happen in a second. But one of the lawsuits that happens is Dawn suing Sonia for plagiarizing her intellectual property, which is her letter she posted on Facebook, and using that in her story. And while this is happening, the worst possible thing in the world happens. The court subpoenas the DMs. Can you imagine having your DMs leaked? Anyway, the court decides to subpoena all the DMs that Sonia was having with other members of their literary circle that Dawn was not involved with, including very famous author Celeste Eng, who wrote the book Little Fires Everywhere. She's very well known. She was one of the people that the DMs between her and Sonia got leaked. And these DMs were things like, man, fuck Dawn and her one kidney. Dawn needs to shut the fuck up about her kidney. Fuck Dawn right in the kidney. Like, it's just all this mean shit. And then one of the DMs is like, yeah, I hope Dawn doesn't notice that I basically stole her, her letter, but like she straight up admits to it. And so all this stuff happens then because Sonia's uh, story was getting put in all these anthologies. It was very successful. It was taking off. It was going to be in this Boston book festival. And then Dawn contacts the Boston book festival and be like, you should know that Sonia's story that you've taken for this has plagiar has my plagiarized property in it. And they were like, um, well, we ordered all these thousands of printed copies of it, and now we have to destroy them all because of this. And then Sonia got mad because she's like, the Boston Book Festival is being canceled now because of you. But then the Boston Book Festival was like, no, Sonia, it's because you submitted a story with plagiarized work. You weren't supposed to do that. So whole hot mess of a thing. I believe these two are still suing and counter suing each other. So people are asking who's the bad art friend, right? On one side of the story, we've got uh, Sonia's the bad friend because she's she plagiarized someone else's stuff. The other side says Dawn was this friend who was basically harassing Sonia all the time to be like, D -d -d what do you think about my kidney? Like constantly. We're going to go through everything. This has been a big discussion. And the way the article is written for the New York Times, I'm going to read a chronological order version of it. But the way the article is written for the New York Times is written in a very uh, literary type of orders written as uh, in a very narrative type of way to be like, okay, well, this person's doing a bad thing now. This person's doing a good thing now. Now this person's the villain. Now this person's the villain. It goes back and forth. And you never really know for sure who was the bad art friend. Now there's a lot of people who are on different uh, teams for this. Team Dawn, Team Sonia. Uh, and then there's some people who say they both suck. So we're going to go through everything, look at the details, and we'll see what you guys think. And I'm curious on everyone's thoughts about this. Lindsay says if the DMs got leaked to the New York Times, the New York Times would be too embarrassed to print them. <laughs> um, so, yes. So th there is to say that, like, okay, is it is it fair to judge Sonia based on the content of her DMs? Don't we all every once in a while... You know, maybe we need to vent about somebody who we feel like is annoying us, even though we like them on the whole. And we do that in the DMs. Is that really fair to judge her on a, on a private conversation? But what's what's crucial about the DMs is she did admit to plagiarizing in them. Um, they both seem exhausting. Yeah, yeah. But to be fair, I'm kind of exhausting, too. So that's partially why I was like, I can't hate them both that much because I'm also exhausting and I don't want to be a hypocrite. Um, so let's share the timeline of what happened and then we're going to talk about everything and go into all the drama and the details. So this is a blog called Rotten in Denmark, but this is um, very a very well-written article that uh, takes you through the chronological timeline. I like this tweet. Me watching a polar bear hunt a seal in a polar bear documentary. Haha, <laughs> fuck yeah. Me watching a polar bear hunt a seal in a seal documentary. Well, this fucking suck. I love that. It's all about perspective, guys. Okay, so it starts in 2005 to 2015. These are the years that Dawn and Sonia first meet each other. So um, between 2005 and 2007, these two meet each other in a writing nonprofit group in Boston called Grub Street. So it's like a group, it has resources and classes for writers and things like that, writing critique groups, writing groups, things like that. So these two meet trying to take their writing careers off the ground. Um, so then what happens, they become friends. Now, this is from the beginning where I was originally on Dawn's side a little bit, because 
Dawn views friendship the way I view friendship. And I think Sonia views friendship the way... I don't want to say neurotypicals, because I don't know if Sonia... I'm not going to speculate on other people's mental health or anything like that. But Sonia views friendship in a way that a lot of people who are not like me view friendship. And Dawn views it like me. So I, I related to Dawn. And I think that's kind of the point of the story and the way it's told is that you're going to relate to different ones at different times. And then you're going to start trying to justify the things that the person you relate to does because you want to be the good art friend. And I think that's what's interesting about this. So basically... Um, I related to Dawn at the beginning because Dawn and Sonia are in this these writing groups. They're part of this writing thing together. So Dawn considers them friends. Sonia doesn't consider them friends. Not because she hates Dawn or anything, but just because she's a little more selective on who her friends are. Now, I'm exactly like Dawn in this case. I've talked before about how I'm like, I don't have acquaintances. I have strangers, friends, and family. Like, that is it. Once we've talked once or twice, we're basically friends. I'll say to people all the time, oh, yeah, I have a friend that does this thing. It's like, oh, when did you last talk to that friend? A year ago? Whatever. We're friends. Like, I, my barrier to trusting people and to letting people into my life is way lower than most people. So it is very easy to become friends with me. It is very easy to get on my good side. That's my point. I'm like Dawn. I latch onto friendships easily. And I really like, I like getting to know as many people as possible. So Dawn considers Sonia a friend. She trusts her. She considers her a person that is, you know, part of her circle. Um, Sonia doesn't hate Dawn, but she just doesn't really consider her a friend. She's like, she's just a, uh, basically a co-worker, an acquaintance, something like that. So there's a little bit of an imbalance on who considers whom a friend. I have been in Dawn's situation before. And I will tell you, I'm a very direct communicator. If someone is not my friend, they need to tell it to my face. Like, if you're not my friend, you need to say, savvy. We are not friends. Otherwise, I won't know. And I know that a lot of people, that's hard to say, because saying we're not friends to someone sounds like an attack. It sounds like something vicious you're saying. But no, to me, it's literally a statement. I'm a bit, I've talked about this before. With my OCD, I'm a very, very literal person. I need to be told things in exact words. My love language, words of affirmation. If someone doesn't tell me they love me every day, how the fuck am I supposed to know? I'm supposed to infer that? I don't infer things. So that's just how my brain works. I don't know if Dawn's brain works the same way. Again, not speculating on anyone's mental health, but based on Dawn's actions, it seems like I can relate to that as someone who's like, yes, we're friends, unless you tell me directly otherwise. So they have this like, you know, co-working relationship and Dawn, consider Dawn seems to think their friendship is more than Sonia thinks their friendship is, which is my greatest nightmare. My greatest nightmare already is that uh, this constant anxiety is that deep down I have friends who don't like me as much as I like them, which I know has happened to me before because I'm a little too extroverted sometimes. So um, anyway, let's continue. Um, so this basically says... Um, at this blog, I think, does a great job of, uh, it says, chances are you identify with one of the protagonists. Um, I've always, this person says, at this point of the story, I'm with Dawn. I've always feared that my behavior is cringy in ways I'm unaware of and that my friends discuss behind my back. This anxiety is particularly acute in professional settings where I often don't know the rules for social interaction or how to draw the line between my LinkedIn self and my actual personality. I'm exactly the same. I'm, can, I'm just like wondering now how many people it's not that they don't consider me a friend is and they actively don't think about me being their friend or they actively think Savvy is not my friend. I mean, how many people just don't even think about, about that? Like if some people brought up, oh, Savvy, they, if they would, they'd be like, oh, I'm vaguely aware of her. Meanwhile, I'm like, yeah, we're best friends. Like, anyway, <laughs> anyway, this story is an extrovert nightmare. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Um... So this is right. Okay. So it says based on the early documents and uh, based on this blog's interpretation, Don liked Sonia and thought they had a real connection. Sonia found Don obnoxious, but didn't want to make a thing out of it because they inhabited the same professional scene. That's the thing too. People being polite for the sake of being professional. I don't know how to read that as anything other than you genuinely like me. I'm going to need you to tell me that you're just being kind to be professional so that I know that. And that's not natural for most people to want to say. That's what's hard about this. I talked about this on Twitter the other day, actually for the longest time, you know how on the phone you'll be talking to someone and then at the end of the conversation, they'll be like, well, I don't want to keep you. I'm going to let you go. Apparently, that is a polite way of saying that they want to end the conversation. I did not know that. I thought when they said, I don't want to keep you. I'm going to let you go. To me, that indicates I don't want to keep you. I feel bad about tying up your time. So my response to that would be, 
oh no, you're not keeping me. I'm happy to keep talking. Let's keep going. I don't know how many conversations I prolonged and annoyed the shit out of someone because of that. That's my point. I can't, these like weird social cues that are layered in things that aren't saying what they mean. I cannot pick up on it. It's the OCD guys. I'm, I, I don't want to be one of those people that blames mental illness for things because I take medication and stuff, but I think some people just interpret the world differently. So, oh, Anne says I do well in Germany. I've heard the same for Finland. People are very direct in Finland, but people are also not overly friendly in Finland, but at least I would know they don't want to be my friend. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I think uh, Sonia was trying to be polite and uh, Dawn thought that they had more of a friendship. So I'm on team Dawn at this point. Um, so then what Dawn does, right, is this 2015, Dawn decides to give away her kidney to a stranger and then creates a Facebook group. So this is again where both of these people are telling the stories different to different reporters and things like that. So this guy uh, gathered from different PDFs. Okay. Dawn says, all right, I'm giving away my kidney. I'm going to go through surgery. This is going to be difficult. I want to give people updates on the process. I want to do this for my friends. So she creates a private Facebook group for her friends, which is, you know, Dawn seems very extroverted. So her friends are a lot of people. Um, and, but this is a private Facebook group to update just her friends and the people in her life on the uh, kidney donation and what's going on. So in the Facebook group, Dawn says, oh, it's just 20 to 30 of my closest friends. Sonia says, no, it was 200 to 300 people. And it was, she was trying to blast this to the world. Uh, screenshot from the legal filing says it has 68 people. So neither of them were right. <laughs> they, they were both trying to play their side up a little bit. It's pretty clear. Uh, so, but let's just say, okay, it's got 68 members. These are 68 of Dawn's closest friends, which doesn't strike. Some people are like, you can't have 68 close friends. I have at least more than a hundred close friends in my opinion, but they probably don't see me the same way as I've learned from the story. Um, so, okay, so Amy says, this is super common for people to do when they are medically complicated and going through a transplant that is being medically complicated. Yeah, so Amy, I appreciated your perspective you were giving me as someone who's going through a lot of medical procedures right now and knowing what those complex medical procedures are like. Um, let's see, Zab says, years ago, someone pointed out to me that there are not cues with platonic friendships to level up like with romantic relationships. Dude, that's why I wish it was like The Sims. In The Sims, you just go chat, ask about day, tell joke, chat, ask about day, tell joke, and you watch it go plus, 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 little green plus signs, and then eventually you go hug, uh, hold hand, tell joke. You don't want to do too many romantic ones in a row or they might get turned off. You keep doing it for a while and a while, and then finally you do a kiss, and then next thing you know, you've got 150 babies, <laughs> but that's not how the world works. Um, oh, Genius says Germans are considered not direct in Israel. Are people in Israel super direct? I don't know. This is fantastic. This is fascinating. Um, so let's see. <sighs> All right. So Spike, I'm glad you know that you don't want people to hug you without warning. I will make sure I ask before I attempt to ever hug you when we meet up in a week or two. Uh, I'm going to meet Spike in person. It's going to be great. Uh, so anyway, so some people in the story were like, why would you set up a Facebook group just to brag about donating a kidney? Now, from what Amy in the chat was saying and from what other people are saying, no, it makes perfect sense to set up a group for people that you consider people in your life to update them on a complex medical process that you're going through, that a lot of people do this. I don't know. I've never set up a Facebook group for a medical. I've only set up a Facebook group for a business. That's the only thing I've done. So I don't know. Um, so it seems that, yeah, so apparently, according to Zab, the Facebook group was encouraged by kidney transplant groups because it's an invasive and difficult surgery. So I can understand why she'd want to do this. Again, this just has to do with the implications. Do people consider this obnoxious or do they consider it a totally reasonable and normal thing to do? I guess that depends on what social cues you've been raised with. Um, so during this time, Dawn attended a writer's conference where she bumped into numerous members of the Facebook group few of whom brought up her charitable act. So this is where this is where things start to get interesting in terms of their interactions. So Dawn says, I left that conference with this question. Do writers not care about my kidney donation? So she went to the writer's conference and basically she was a little concerned that no one had brought it up to her. Now, a lot of writers started making fun of her for this behind the scenes because they're like, 
yeah, this, this conference is not about your kidney donation. That's really weird that you think people are going to be talking about it. But from her perspective, she's like, no, it makes sense. You do a major thing in your life. If you see someone and you're like, oh, how are you? It would make sense that you would just say, oh, how are you since your kidney transplant or something like just to like just to show that you're like involved in their life. So I think it really depends on the perspective as well there. Again, this is why the story resonates with so many people, because it's so different based on the perspective. Um, so this writer says, all of this is objectively cringe, but it's also deeply human. Most people are smug and self-congratulatory after they volunteer at a soup kitchen or study abroad. It's clear that Dawn gave away her kidney partly because she wanted other people to praise her. So what? She saved someone else's life at moderate risk to her own health. Personally, I think that gives her a license to be obnoxious on social media for a few months afterward. And yeah, I, dude, like she donated her fucking kidney when she didn't have to. It was just like to just in general, like that's pretty great. Is she a little obsessed about it? Maybe that's annoying to people. Sure. But like, I don't think she's a bad person for that at all, at all. Um, so let's continue. So then here's what happens next. And this is the part where I could kind of see where Sonia was coming from, but still understood where Dawn was coming from. And I'll explain why I can understand both perspectives very clearly here. So basically when you run a Facebook group and you post in the group, your post goes up, right? And it shows you who has seen the post. It shows you like these people have seen the post and then it shows you who liked it, who commented, whatever. So Dawn has been posting regularly updates about this, updates about, oh, it's the one year anniversary since this happened. Here's how I've been recovering, whatever. She's been posting all these updates. And she keeps seeing that on every post, Sonia sees every post, but has never once liked, commented, interacted, anything. Now, is that a big deal, even if they're friends? I personally don't think so. I, I don't think social media is that big of a deal. I think people makes it like sometimes someone will will say, oh, Savvy, I posted this. I saw that you saw it, but didn't like it. And I'll be like, wait, what? I probably saw it in passing, just scrolling through on the toilet. Like social media is not that big of a deal. And it seems like Dawn is making social media a bigger deal than it is. And that's the part where I'm like, I can see where Sonia is coming from here. You know, as I'm a, I'm a creator online right now, I get a lot of DMs from people sometimes I don't see it right away or don't respond to it and I feel bad and sometimes someone follows up and they're like hey did you see this you didn't respond and like I feel bad about that but also I'm kind of like hey, it's not possible to respond to everything. so it's again it's a thing where it's like it's not necessarily a slight against you but at the same time I can see that in Dawn's mind they're they're close friends so why hasn't Sonia said anything to her about this that is kind of weird right I've been in Dawn's position exactly before where um I'll get the, like, guys, I was a bitch in high school. I've talked about this. I was a bitch back in high school. I wasn't really a bitch. Like, I think I was just, again, I was very direct, very assertive, and very, like, forward. And I think a lot of, of teenagers don't like that, which is fair, because, like, it was very unlikable of me. Um, but, like, again, like, if I'm in high school and I found out that uh, someone that I'd considered a friend had a party and didn't tell me about it. I'd go up to them and be like, hey, I heard you had this party and didn't tell me about it. Do you value our friendship? Like, I would say that to people directly. I'd be like, do you value our friendship? And they'd be like, yeah. And I'd be like, then why didn't you invite me to the party? Oh, just because I didn't think of it. If you didn't think of me, then that signals to me you don't value our friendship. That's a shitty thing. That's that's aggressive. I was a teenager. I shouldn't have been being like that. But my point is, I've been exactly where Dawn is in this case, where it's like, if you want to know what, where you stand with someone, you ask directly. So I kind of get that. So this is what's interesting. Yes. So Ro uh, Romina, we're going to talk about this in a second because Sonia was actually talking about Dawn's kidney donation. She just wasn't talking to her face about it. She was making fun of her behind her back about it, but we're not even there yet. My point is here, I can kind of understand what's going on here. Um, so it says... Uh, reaching out to Sonia to ask why she hadn't liked any of her posts makes slightly more sense if you recall that Dawn had considered her a close friend and saw the Facebook group as a small private forum. This wasn't a place where Dawn was posting public appeals for her friends to donate to charity or, hey, look, I'm on the Jumbotron. She was just doing this on her public Facebook page. Okay. The private group was where she posted information about medical complications and more in intimate dispatches, one of which was the text of the letter she sent to the end recipient of her kidney chain. So it's it doesn't seem... I don't know if I have proof of this for certain, but based on this and based on what we've seen so far in the documents, it seems that she had not posted publicly anywhere 
uh, the full letter that she sent to the kidney recipient only in the private group, which Sonia was a part of. Um, so, so this person says, I think emailing Sonia to ask why she hadn't engaged is fairly obnoxious, but in Dawn's mind, this was a close friend who was passively participating in a supportive forum, yet wasn't offering support. So I get it. Like, again, I, I can see both of their sides there. Um, I, I don't think either of them had, well, We'll learn later that Sonia did have bad intentions, but based on this uh, interaction alone in a vacuum, I don't think either of them had bad intentions. Um, so basically, this is what happened. So basically, the perspective they're both in right now is Sonia's like, Don, this vague acquaintance that I've had from the past who is in, uh, who's been in writers groups with me, added me to this group and talks constantly about how she donated her kidney. I see the posts in passing. I don't interact with them. And she goes out of the way to email me to, to ask me why I'm not interacting with them. She's going up to people at conferences being like, what do you think about me donating my kidney? Like from Sonia's perspective, she's like, Dawn seems very self-centered about this kidney donation. Dawn has a completely opposite perspective, right? She's like, Sonia is one of my best friends. We were in writing groups together. We shared our work with each other. We have this connection and I think she's great and we're great friends. That's why I added her to this group. She's seeing all these posts about my medical complications and I thought she was a good friend. So I'm surprised that she doesn't seem to care. She's just kind of ignoring me. What is going on here? And she seemed, when I talked to her, she seems friendly and she seems like she still wants to be friends. So I'm confused. I thought we were friends. Why is she ignoring me? So again, this is a failure of communication right here. This is a people talking past each other. This is a failure of communication. Maya, yes, Sonia could have left the group. This is what we're going to get into. Dawn, this is why, again, I'm still on Team Dawn. Dawn made it ex explicitly clear that you could leave the group at any time. Cause on Facebook, you just add people to groups. She's like, if this isn't your thing, you can leave. Sonia did not leave the group. And even when Dawn reached out to her about it, she still didn't leave the group. She stayed in the group to steal the text of the letter, which is why to, uh, Sonia is the bad art friend in my opinion. Um, but let's continue. Um, so anyway, my point is, I can see at this point in the story, I can see where both of them are coming from in terms of feeling like the other one isn't being good to them. I, and I can also see why, why they both feel in the right in that circumstance. I think it has to do with the difference in communication styles. I'm going to be honest about that. I really do. I think that Dawn seems to be a very direct communicator who needs things in exact words. Maybe that's just me projecting because that's what I need. And that's why I identified with Dawn. So I have no idea. That could just be me projecting. But that's how it seems from this. And meanwhile, Sonia is trying to do something in a more socially acceptable and respectful and polite type of way. And Dawn is just blazing past that in her opinion. So I can, again, I can see where they're both coming from. Um, where the plagiarism comes in is where the line gets crossed, in my opinion. Um, so let's continue. So 2015... Um, so Don, or not Don, so Sonia, Sonia writes this short story called The Kindest. And The Kindest, quote, is a fictional short story about an alcoholic working class Chinese American woman who receives a kidney donated by a wealthy white woman. Uh, so we, we know from this, the character, the character uh, Rose, who donates the kidney in this story, was originally based on Don because it comes out later that there's an earlier draft available where her name is Dawn in the earlier draft. Dawn was not a wealthy white woman. Dawn was a white woman who came from an impoverished town in rural Iowa. Dawn has a lot of trauma from her past. She has a lot of, you know, stuff she's personally working through and I'm not going to unpack it all. I'm not a therapist. You know what I'm saying? So, so, but Sonia writes this story, which is not about Dawn. It's it's fiction, but it draws from real life. So she draw. So she decides. So the story basically, right? It's this Chinese American woman who gets a kidney donation from this wealthy white woman named Rose. Rose is has a, a little bit of white savior tendencies, where she wants to be the one who's always saving everybody, partially for her own. Uh, emotional fulfillment and things like that. So it's kind of an exploration of the emotions behind that. The story does sound interesting to me, to be honest. Uh, so she, she writes that. And then 
Here we go. Around a third of the way through the story, Sonia's protagonist receives a letter from the white savior who donated her kidney. In the original version of the story, the one Sonia submitted to numerous publishers and recorded for Audible, this letter is almost identical to a letter Dawn posted in the private Facebook group. We're going to look at the... Hold up. I've got the, the letters to compare to each other right here. We're going to look at them. So here we go. This is Kidney Gate. <laughs> Kidney Gate on Twitter for uh, this Twitter account basically was like that they they're devoted to this Kidney Gate. How about it? Wait, can I not zoom in on this? Oh, OK. OK, that's frustrating. OK, anyway, we will read the. I'm going to read the text of the letter out loud. So the real letter we will read the highlighted parts. Here's the yellow part. The, the, the first letter, the first line from Dawn the real letter she wrote. My name is Dawn Dorland. I'm a 35 year old white female and I live with my husband in LA. Fictional letter, first line. My name is Rose Rothario. I'm a 38 year old white female and I live in greater Boston. Almost identical first sentences, but you know, the, the, those are very common first sentences, right? Let's see if it continues. Dawn's letter, her real letter from Facebook says, in 2009, I read my first article about living kidney donation. And in the years since, I have been constantly reminded of the dire need in our country for kidneys. Sonia's fictional letter says, in 2015, I saw my first documentary about living kidney donation. And from that point forward, I was constantly reminded of the urgent need for kidneys in our country. That's almost word for word the same. Um, Dawn then writes in her real letter, um, uh, I stood to make a maximum impact in others' lives with only minimal risk to myself. Sonia's letter says, I set forth on a journey to make maximum impact on another's life with only minimal risk to myself. L literally, the second the, the second half of those sentences is not, there's word for word the same. So then um, Dawn says, personally, my childhood was marked by trauma and abuse. I didn't have the opportunity to form secure attachments with my family of origin. Sonia's fictional letter says, my own childhood was marked by trauma and abuse. I wasn't given an opportunity to form secure attachments with my family of origin. What did she even change there? She changed nothing. Oh, Dawn said personally at the beginning. I think that's the only thing that's different. Good Lord. Good Lord. Um, so let's continue. Let's continue. This, this is pretty obvious plagiarism at this point. Um, so Dawn says, while perhaps many more people would be motivated to donate, or donate an organ to a friend or family member in need, to me, the suffering of strangers is just as real. Sonia's letter says, while others might desire to give to a family member or friend, to me, the suffering of strangers is just as real. Dude, she didn't even try. This is literally the same fucking letter. She didn't even try. Um... So yeah, basically it, it, it's just, it's the same fucking letter, dude. She stole the letter. It's the same fucking letter. So yeah. And I think, I think when we talk about this more, because I like seeing people in the chat talking about what Dawn did right, what Sonia did right, what they each did wrong. What Amy says here, I agree with, which is that the heart of the story is theft of words. And I agree with that. And I think that's true, especially from a legal perspective. However, there is a more complex thing to this, which is a discussion of the, the morals and the ethics behind this as well. Not just from a perspective of was this legally plagiarism, was this legally copyright infringement or theft or whatever, but more so, I guess because the, the, the title is called Who's the Bad Art Friend? What does it mean when we share a piece of ourselves in a group who ethically has rights to certain ideas of a story? Not legally, ethically. What does it mean when life imitates art and all of that? There's just like a bigger conversation to have in total here about what this means. Also about the way that humans communicate and all of that. Um, so let's continue. So there, the letter was plagiarized. Like, I don't think that there's any... I don't have any doubt about that. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just saying that's my opinion. Uh, despite what Sonia will later tell her friends to make Dawn seem unreasonable, this wasn't an honest mistake or written from memory or placeholder text that was left by accident. Sonia made only superficial tweaks to the text of Dawn's letter, and she knew it. Months later, she texted two friends, right? Okay, so remember, the DMs were subpoenaed by the court, and here's what was found in the DMs. Sonia says... 
I think I'm done with the kidney story, but I feel nervous about sending it out because it literally has sentences that I verbatim grabbed from Dawn's letter on Facebook. I've tried to change it, but I can't seem to. The letter was just too damn good. She admits to plagiarism right there. She admits to it. She says, I grabbed it. Yeah, I grabbed, I grabbed it from the letter. I wanted to change it, but I like it the way it is. Yeah, you like it the way it is because someone else wrote it. Can you imagine if I like found someone else's book and I was like, I want to write a story that's kind of like this, but this one's just too good the way it is. So I'll just copy this one. That's plagiarism, dude. It was just too good the way it is. Someone else's work. <laughs> that's plagiarism. And I know when she says too damn good, I'm pretty sure she doesn't mean good literally. I'm pretty sure here she means like Dawn looked like a fool in her opinion, which I don't think so. I think that Don was writing a letter like calm down dude it's her personal correspondence anyway uh but in her mind she's like oh this letter was too cringy I could not have included it was just too good right the tea was too hot that's what she's saying um so it says now everything clicks into place Sonia stayed in Don's Facebook group at least in part to surveil and mock her the legal filings include numerous exchanges where Sonia's friends text her with some variation of you'll never guess what Don posted this time and Sonia responds in turn yeah dude she admitted to it which is wild she just like straight up was like I'm a little nervous about the story because I did just basically copy and paste the whole thing she admits it dude and that's why this is like there's no question this was plagiarism she confessed to it dude um exactly um as genius says the group being private is key yeah dawn dawn i don't believe posted this on her public facebook page she only posted it to the private group so i think she was like here's the letter i sent and I want to share it with you guys as you've been along with me on this journey. I think it was meant to be private correspondence that this person stole and leaked. It's plagiarism, man. So here's some DMs that Sonia sent. And, you know, I feel bad again. I'd feel bad if my DMs got leaked and I was just venting about a friend who had annoyed me. Like, I'm sure people have complained about me in the DMs before. I think everyone's complained about someone in the DMs before. Maybe this makes me an asshole. Maybe people are watching this being like, I've never complained about any of my friends in the DMs, Sev. You must be an awful friend. Maybe I'm the bad art friend. Who knows? Um, but my point is that I think it's it's fine if you're if here and there you have to vent about something to another friend in the DMs. I think that's normal and it's meant to be private. So I understand why Sonia would have been this way. But there's a lot of these DMs to a lot of people. And she seems like she was really just staying in this group to steal her work and shit on her that's what it seems like which is a bad art friend thing to do yeah rk literally only complains about me to savvy that's good to know <laughs> oh jess so here's um here's the thing too I, I i think maybe facebook has changed this feature since then facebook in 2015 when this happened the way you added people to a group you couldn't request people to join a group you could only add people to a group I'm pretty sure. I think Facebook groups has changed this since then. Facebook groups, because I remember trying to start groups back then and I'd feel bad because I'd be like, oh, I need to, I want to add these people to a group. The idea, I think what was expected on Facebook back then was that someone would add you to a group and if you didn't want to be there, you would leave. And I think Dawn had a message at the top that was like, I added you guys because I wanted you guys to see this, but if you don't want to stay here, you can leave. It was one of those kind of things. However, I get it because it was annoying whenever someone added you to a Facebook group without without you wanting to be there. That was also annoying. So again, it's another thing where it's like, I don't think either of them are really wrong in in that case. I think that was kind of a failure on Facebook's part. At, at the end of the day, you guys know how I am with every one of these complicated conflicts. At the end of the day, I always blame corporations. That's what's going to happen too. I feel like, for one thing, Facebook's at fault here, right? Because Facebook is always trying to get people to do as much engagement as possible, regardless of what they want and things like that. So Facebook wanted you to be able to just add people to groups so that they would then have to take the action to leave so they'd be forced to engage with more content. That was a, a manipulative mechanic on Facebook's part. And that was pretty stupid. So anyway. Yeah, nowadays people accept or decline when you add them to a group. I think in 2015 you just added them and they are automatically went in. I could be wrong about that, but that's how I remember Facebook being at the time. Um so let's continue. Um so these are Sonia's DMs being like, 
oh my goodness, I just read it. It really is incredible. She just can't stop being herself. Remember how we were talking about her emotional food and how she just keeps pulling the lever to get more? This is exactly what this is. I feel like she's fetishizing her own saintliness. This is so ironic and weird. It just creeps me out, especially because she keeps proselytizing her good deed, that hashtag, man. Oh yeah, I think Dawn made some hashtag or something. So, I mean, th these DMs, I feel like, aren't that damning. This is just a friend shit talking another friend in the DMs. It happens. It happens, man. It happens. Uh, uh, here we go. Amanda. Thank you for this, Amanda. Amanda says, so I'm going to out myself as a kidney donor here. It's a pretty invasive surgical procedure and it's hard to get people to donate. They want you to talk about it. Okay. So there's that other element too, that Dawn was probably encouraged to talk about this publicly a lot because getting people to donate kidneys is hard and there's a lot of people who need kidneys so they're probably encouraging you to talk to people about it and also inform them on what it's like now does that mean that it's not annoying to your friends and family no it doesn't mean it's not annoying so again if sonia didn't like that she probably should have left the group also amanda thank you so much for being a kidney donor that's a really awesome thing to do like donating an organ is is incredible i i couldn't imagine doing it it's a lot that's a lot so thank you for saving a life um, so let's see. So, okay. So basically here's the confrontation. So summer of 2016, right? This is after all this happens. Um, I think what, oh, sorry. What happened in here somewhere was that the, uh, Sonia's story got published and then this friend named Tom, I think, commented on one of Dawn's posts to be like, oh, did you hear about Sonia's story? She wrote about kidney donation. Were you in the inspiration for this? And then so uh, Dawn, uh, Dawn feels hurt, right? Because she's like, well, I've been trying to update Sonia about my kidney donation for a while. I thought we were friends and she seemed to not care. But it turns out she did care about kidney donation because she was writing a story about one the whole time. She's in my group reading my posts about kidney donation and writing a story about one. But she wasn't talking to me at all about my own kidney donation. Like, seems kind of like Sonia's being a bad friend. This is how Dawn feels. Meanwhile, Sonia's like, we're not even friends. What are you talking about? So again, it's a failure of communication. Um. So anyway, that's what happened. So that's what causes uh, Dawn to reach out to Sonia and be like, hey, I heard you wrote a story about kidney donation. And Sonia's like, yeah, uh, you inspired me. Like, she's being nice about it. Anyway. Tom Meek, that was his name. Makes me think of Tom Nook from Animal Crossing. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, Zab, we're about to, I'm going to pull up all your stuff from the subreddit in a second. I'm sorry you have to go. Thank you so much for posting all that information in the subreddit. Um, so Dawn was hurt. Her friend hadn't seemed interested in her own story of donating a kidney. And now she wrote one without saying anything to her. Dawn reached out to Sonia to say that she'd heard the story and asked if she could read it. Sonia said it wasn't finished and said that, Dawn's experience didn't have anything to do with it. It was just a jumping off point, blah, 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 blah. Um, so then uh, Sonia, okay, the Sonia was lying. Not only was the story finished, it had already been published. She was working with an actor to record an audio version. Behind the scenes, Sonia updated the text of the letter to make it look less identical to Dawn's and emailed Audible to ask them to re-record part of the story. Um... So basically, it's like, okay, they seem fine, right? The kindest, uh, Sonia's story, it's not about Dawn. Dawn is like, okay, she was inspired by it, whatever, we're moving forward. So then it talks about how Dawn does end up seeing the story and is like, wait, holy shit, no, that's literally my letter verbatim. I have to read the email to Audible? Okay, wait, hold up. Is it linked in here? Here it is. Yeah, okay, hold on. We'll read that real quick. Damn, there's a lot of shit on Twitter. Um, okay, oh yeah, the because it was uh, the courts requested it. Okay. We're going to read a lot of shit on Twitter in a minute. This might be a long stream, but that's okay. I'm in the mood for a long stream. Okay, so here's... Uh, here's the, okay, so when Dawn heard Sonia had written a kidney donation story, she wondered if Sonia had mined content from Dawn's private Facebook group. Sonia chose to lie. In fact, she had signed a contract months before to publish on Audible, and only now did Sonia realize she majorly effed up. Um, okay, so here we go. So here's Sonia's email to Dawn. She says, hey, Dawn, 
Yes, I'll try not to pressure. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, my memory is that I did indeed join the Facebook group. Either way, I want to emphasize my story is not about you or your particular gift, but about narrative possibilities I began thinking about in the context of kidney donation. So while your tremendous gift certainly prompted my imagination, I actually see the process of writing the story as quite separate. Thus, why I haven't mentioned the piece to you or really to anyone outside my writing group. And I love the idea that we all deserve such gifts. It's an idea that seems seldom entertained when people debate which organ recipients may be more deserving than others and for what reasons. My doctor friends tell me, for example, that they won't perform transplant surgery on someone they suspect won't take steadfast care of the new organ, which makes sense, I suppose. But obviously that calculus has a huge impact on who gets kidneys and who doesn't. It's also complex and the stakes are so high. I find it so fascinating. So that's the email. She's basically like, you inspired me. The story's not about you, but uh, it got me thinking about a bunch of different possibilities, which I don't have. A, if she hadn't stolen the text of her letter, I wouldn't have a problem with that because that's the thing, guys. We we take ideas from life all the time. We take things that we see happen to ourselves and our friends and we see things that we happen in the world that we see happen in the world. And we write a story that's not based on that verbatim. Like I've talked about this in the past when I, my novel, One Final Vinyl. Uh, it's a story of an elderly woman who has Alzheimer's shows up at the door of an 18 year old girl who's about to leave for college. And the two end up going on a road trip together when she goes to drive her back to her retirement home. And it's about cross generational friendship. This story exactly didn't happen to me, but something very similar happened to me when one night when I was maybe 20 and a woman who was 86 years old, who had left her retirement home and confused in the middle of the night came to my door and I let her in. And while we waited for her daughter to come get her, we found a way to contact her. We had cookies and she told me about her childhood in the Great Depression. And I thought that was a really interesting story. So I wrote a novel where it was like, well, what if in a, a different version of this type of story, it had been someone who really needed a friend at that moment and someone who needed a ride back to their home. And it, it, like, so I kind of took narrative possibilities from that. So I think that it's fine to, to, to look at a starting off point of something that happens in the real world and take, see what possibilities come from it. So if this hadn't involved literal plagiarism, I think it would have been completely different. Um, so let's talk about the Audible email. So Sonia emails um, Chaz. So it starts down here on the email chain. I think maybe Chaz is the guy from Audible. Um, so Sonia says, hello, Chaz. Thank you for checking in. And incidentally, my designer and I are going back and forth with options as we speak. I'm thinking we'll have them wrapped up by the end of next week. Uh, the designs are, so they're talking about cover design. Then she says, I do have one major question, however. One of my stories contains a letter sent from one character to another, which includes a couple sentences that I'd excerpted from a real life letter. I'm now realizing that for ethical reasons, I'm uncomfortable keeping those lines in and would much like to revise them. I know that the story has already been recorded, but is there any way that those few lines might be re-recorded with the new lines? So then uh, this person, Jenny from Audible, emails her back and says uh because Chaz is on vacation apparently so Jenny says it would be hard to get audible to re-record because of all the post-production that goes into it after it's recorded it's just part of that would it's not just part of that would have to be recorded but likely everything in order to match the voice the recording is more than they pay for the rights but I could ask them anyway I could see maybe negotiating by offering another story of yours into the mix that they didn't have to pay additional rights for so uh Sonia emails back and says um, I'm glad Chaz is enjoying himself. Blah, and, and then I totally understand it's a huge pain to re-record, but I definitely have another story that could have the audio rights too, if that would help the request be more doable. So she uh, includes another story for that. So basically she admits it in the audible email. Um, so let's continue. Okay, so she emailed audible. So then we're going to 2018 when lawyers get involved. Shout out to the author. Let me just give another shout out to the author of this blog post about it for putting this in chronological order. Uh, who wrote this? Well, we know that the blog is called Rotten in Denmark. Shout out to Rotten in Denmark for putting this story in chronological order. I appreciate that. Um, so anyway, we're on to 2018. Uh, okay, so it was clear to Dawn that Sonia had written a story about an entitled, oblivious, self-aggrandizing kidney donor based on her own life and lifted from her Facebook posts. Over the following months, Dawn attempted to scorch the earth underneath Sonia's writing career. 
so this is the part where Dawn exacts revenge. I, I gotta admit, this makes me sound like an asshole, but I like when writers get dramatic. Because a lot of times people think, oh, writers are very, they're very meek and introverted and they're very quiet and reserved and they save their drama for what they write in the story. Like, no, dude, writers are nuts. I'm a writer and I'm nuts and I can tell you that. So uh, anyway, so, okay, so Dawn decides to exact her revenge for this. Um, Daniela says, I'm an audiobook post production and that surprises me. So long as you have the same engineer's recording settings, it shouldn't be hard to change some lines. Just very annoying if everything was done. That's kind of how it seems, but I don't know. Maybe they do it differently. I don't really know what's going on. So Dawn attempted to scorch the earth underneath Sonia's writing career. So first thing um, Dawn does, which I don't think is going scorched earth. I think what she does at first is pretty reasonable. But she reaches out to American Short Fiction to tell them that Sonia's story included passages plagiarized from her own work. Um, so then Dawn threatens legal action. So American Short Fiction was, I believe, the anthology where um, Dawn's, not where Sonia's uh, story was going to be published. So uh, Dawn says, if you agree that the letter in Sonia's story bears a problematic resemblance to the one I composed and shared with her privately, remedies that I would find acceptable range from. ASF's pulling the story to the author, making an acknowledgement of my text. I would also, or in addition, consider writing an article for ASF, raising ethical issues germane to all writers. How do we balance careerist impulses with our stated artistic ideals, empathy among them? And for those in the you shared it, I st so I stole it, stole it school. Does being writers give us permission to violate the bonds of intimacy to fail one another as friends? So she writes this to them. Um, so she filed a copyright on her original letter, hired a lawyer, and pitched the story to journalists. She reached out to more than a dozen mutual acquaintances and in literary institutions. Um, so she basically writes out, be, writes to them being like, hey, this was plagiarized. So a month after American Short Fiction published this story, Dawn learned it was slated to be included in One City, One Story, an anthology published by the Boston Book Festival. Um, so Dawn decides to sue the festival she said oh not sue she sends a cease and desist notice to the boston book festival with one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in damages so here's where it starts to feel a little like okay i think sonia has every or i think dawn has every right to fight this she was wronged she is the victim in this 100 percent but this seems a little excessive not because she wants the story gone but threatening with that amount of money to a book festival, which like a lot of them are put on by small groups without big budgets, seems a little hurtful to small businesses. When in reality, she probably should have just called them up and been like, hey, remove Sonia's story, it's plagiarized. The threatening with that level of lawsuit seems a lot. And that's not to say that Dawn is ethically wrong. It's just to say that in this case, like, again, I'm going to talk about why I think at the end of the day, corporations are the real uh, villain in this. Um, so she sends this and says, I was under the impression that as a leading literary organization, the organizers of the Boston Book Festival um, would assume the task of modeling ethical behavior. I wouldn't have been at all surprised if Boston Book Festival had found it repugnant to grant a writer who committed plagiarism such a wonderful platform. At the very least, with the legal issue neutralized, I would have expected the organization to acknowledge the remedies it took in order to proceed with the story. Such an acknowledgement could even graciously include naming me, my service, and my work. So she basically reaches out and is like, this story was plagiarized, y'all. Now, what the Boston Book Festival did not know that the story had plagiarism in it. In fact, this is what we're going to talk about here. When Sonia had submitted this story, she had to basically confirm that the story was 100% original work. They were actually very mad at her being like, hey, you lied to us and said that this wasn't plagiarized. So this is still Sonia's fault. I just think Dawn took it a little too far. So again... It's nuanced issues, guys. Nuanced. Um, oh, she maybe yeah, that's a good point. Maybe she was doing this under legal advice. Maybe her lawyer wanted. Sometimes lawyers are go big or go home because they want to get paid more too. Um, ACP says I'm probably biased here because I love Boston Book Festival. That's the same thing. I love in Chicago. I love Printers Row Lit Festival. I make tons of money there every year selling my books and plushies. It's a big event. Before I got started doing things on the internet, that was like my Black Friday for me, basically. So if this happened, if like one author's thing caused the whole thing to get shut down, because that's what's about to happen, I would be really sad. I would be really sad knowing that like th this event isn't at fault. Like, but again, it's still 
I mean, Sonya's the one who plagiarized, so she caused it. But at the same time, I wish that Dawn and her lawyer hadn't gone quite so hard about it. Maybe tried something a little more compromised. Not, not that I think plagiarism is an issue to compromise on, but it's just, again, it's not an issue just directly of black and white, right and wrong. It's an issue of, like, who does all of this effect along the way. So, anyway, but I could be wrong there. I could be wrong. Um... Yeah, Letty says at that point, Sonia should have been telling those small festivals because she'd already been ignoring Dawn's warnings. Jess says she was angry because the piece was so unflattering to her character. Had she used bits of the letter, which I do not condone, but framed it positively, no way was this happening. I don't necessarily, I mean, I can see where you're coming from. The character that it was that is based on Dawn is not shown to be a flattering character. But I don't think that that's at the heart of the issue. I think what's at the heart of the issue, too, is that Sonia was drifting away from Dawn, telling Dawn they were still friends. Like I think there's a lot of um a lot of issues related to the professional and friendship type relationship because when friends betray you, it hurts no matter what. Even if she had stolen it for a positive portrayal, I don't know what would I guess you know I'm I don't exist in a Star Trek universe. I don't have I don't have uh, abilities to see parallel universes, so I can't. I can't say what would have happened under different circumstances. You might be right. Who knows? Um, so. Wait, what happened? A relevant reader says, we talk about the fact that you're wrong about you, Savvy. What's you're wrong about? They use me as a source for what? Was it a flattering portrayal? <laughs> Since we're talking about that, or were they like, Savvy's a bitch, we hate her. I don't know. So anyway, let's continue. Uh, let me know what you mean by that, irrelevant reader, and I will be excited. Um, anyway, I'm gonna drink some coffee real quick. We'll go back to this. Oh, it's a podcast. It's a podcast called You're Wrong About. They use me as a source. That's exciting. I gotta listen to that. Oh, dude, I'll check that out. I'll check that out. Okay, cool. Um, so, okay, here we go again. It's straightforwardly unethical and immoral behavior. Local book festivals do not have deep pockets. According to correspondence included in the legal filings, the festival organizers spent more than $10,000 defending themselves. Whenever they tried to meet Dawn's demands, she ratcheted them up. At the end, they canceled the festival and destroyed every copy of the anthology. So this gets to be where the, the problem gets to continue, right? Dawn's lawyer keeps upping the demands. Dawn's lawyer is the bad art friend right now, I will say. Oh, is it about my Rachel Hollis piece? Oh, that's cool. I'll check that out. It's called, what's it called again? Let me see. It's called You're Wrong About. You're Wrong About. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Hold up, guys. I need to write this down because I want to remember to watch or not watch. Listen to You're Wrong About. Thanks for letting me know. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so basically this person's saying, okay, Dawn and Sonia were both wrong in this particular instance, which I agree with. As the festival organizers point out in some of the saltiest emails I've, I've ever seen, oh, the emails are good. I think we'll be able to look at those if I can. It wasn't you're wrong about it, it was maintenance phase. Oh, I did listen to maintenance phase, I think. I think, or was that another one? Was it maintenance phase? Either way, I think it was maintenance phase that I listened to. Um... No, oh, yeah, maintenance phase I did listen to. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, okay, so as they pointed out, she should she never should have submitted a story that was part of a copyright dispute with another author. Correct, she should not have done that. She knew Dawn was going after the ASF, and let's remember, Dawn's claim was correct. She had based her character on Dawn, and her letter was Dawn's letter. Considering they knew a lot of the same people and worked with the same literary organizations, did she really think Dawn was just never going to find out? I keep marveling at how little Sonya seemed to consider Dawn's feelings, which is true. Like she worked on the story for like two years and the whole time it like never occurred to her that someone that clearly considered her a friend would find out about this and be upset about it. Like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, exactly. You have so many mutuals. <laughs> okay. So it's not clear who formally hired a lawyer first. But Sonia sued first. So that's one thing. The New York Times article kind of makes it sound like Dawn sued first because the way that it's telling the story is not chronological. It's telling it kind of by theme, which makes sense narratively. I think the New York Times article is told in a very interesting way that is supposed to evoke the certain emotion of like, I'm on this side. Oh no, now I'm on this side. Oh no, I'm on this side. And I really, really identify with this person. I would have done what they did. So when they do the stupid thing later, I want to justify it. It's that thing, right? The article even talks about like, 
how I think one of them was very into that meme from a long time ago with that one dress that had the stripes that was like blue. Was it blue and was it blue and black or gold and white? Remember everyone argued over that? And I was like, it's blue and gold. And I will die on the hill that it was blue and gold, but that was never an option. And I'm still mad about that. Anyway, that's what the, that dress meme, right? And so then people were like, yeah, because the article itself is almost like that meme of the dress. Who is justified when they do things that get increasingly awful? That's the question. It's blue and gold. Anyway, okay. So Sonia sued first, filing a claim against Dawn for tortia, tor, tortious, I don't know that word, <laughs> tortious interference, sabotaging her financial relationship with publishers, writers' workshops, and it appears the entire American literary establishment. I will agree with Jess. They were both so happy, dude. They both could not wait to sue each other, which is a lot. We're going to talk about all of this. <laughs> Uh, Dawn had stumbled across the original version of the story, the one with the super copy-pasted version of the letter online, and countersued for copyright infringement and emotional distress. I have no idea whether any of Dawn's or Sonia's actions constitute legally actionable behavior, and I don't care. Bad art friend is a morality play. That's what makes it so interesting to talk about. And the legal system is only relevant as a weapon wielded by one protagonist against the other. This is, as far as I can tell, how Don and Sonia have spent the last three years, suing and countersuing each other. Over 7,000 pages of discovery evidence have now been entered into the record. The original lawsuits have become numbingly bored, boring meta lawsuits about whose counsel said what and which plaintiff owes discovery evidence to the other. Uh, and it says here, the thing I'm sure of is that by now, both women have spent tens of thousands of dollars fighting in court about a short story that sold for $425. And uh, that's where I was realized where the real villain is here. The real villain is that the, the literature industry, the writing industry as a whole, does not value writers. Just the market in general does not value writers. And I think that is at the heart of this problem at the end of the day. Um, we're going to take a look at some of the... Oh, anyway, this person, by the way, confirms that they, they, they conclude from this that Sonia was the bad art friend up until 2018, and then Dawn became the bad art friend. They're both the bad art friend. This is what this person confirms. Anyway, so I was, that's their opinion. I'm interested to hear your guys' opinions. I'll open it up in a little bit for people to come in. Um, so anyway, the fact that, um, I want to talk about how, like, so on Twitter and other places, people kept talking about how this was Mean Girls, right? This was basically Mean Girls, people shit talking each other, plotting against each other. It's Mean Girls. And that made me think about how, no, the real villain here is that, first of all, the market doesn't value literature financially. And second of all, the literature world culturally doesn't value women. And I think that both of those are at the heart of the issue here. And I'll talk about why. And I could be wrong. And I want to hear other people's opinions on this because I could be absolutely wrong about this. But in my many years spent working as a writer and working in various roles in the literature industry, I have noticed that there is this stigma. We talked about this right when I did the Oprah's Book Club uh, scandals video, and I talked about Jonathan Franzen and how there have been regular cases of like men being able to act pretentious about their literature. Men are literary heroes. They're these, these smart and, and classy people who are very well-read and very intelligent. And women who are writers are only, they're, they're just, they're, they can do that because their husbands fund them or what, like that's what it's seen as, right? So when this whole thing is played off as like, these are, this is a mean girls type of thing. I'm like, well, they're, these are grown women. And normally I don't have a problem with people saying girls or boys when they mean women or men. I'm, I, I don't have a problem with that. I'm not that uptight about that. But specifically the fact that people were saying this is like a mean girls, this is like a high school mean girls type of thing. I'm like, no, male writers were just as bad. And as we're going to see, there were male writers in these groups acting just as shitty. But it, all the focus was on this was some type of catfight type of thing. And at the end of the day, this is women making barely any money. These women are getting master's degrees in writing and literature. These women are spending all of this time going to these workshops, teaching these workshops, doing crafts, and they can barely afford these legal fees. What the fuck is this? Like, this really started to get to me, like, why, why is this so undervalued? I really see... I really see that a lot in terms of um, 
this might be a controversial thing to say. So if you disagree with this, feel free to let me know in the chat. And when I open it up for people to come on, you can let me know in my face as well. I think there is, there's a difference between stay at home parents and working parents. Neither is better or worse than the other. They are both incredibly important roles that are necessary to society, but they are not the same thing. Yet, I constantly see women who are full-time writers calling themselves a stay-at-home mom. And you don't see men who are full-time writers call themselves a stay-at-home dad. They call themselves an author. They call themselves a professional writer. But people want to characterize women who are professional writers who make their income getting published in publications or self-publishing or making tangible financial income that they report on their taxes from their writing. And it is an overall effort to devalue literature and women in literature. So this is what gets me going. I think this is a big part of the puzzle as well, is that I'm reading this thinking how depressed I just feel for both of them, that they're both putting decades of work into learning writing, into becoming writers, into putting their work out there, and the world is paying them these small ass checks for their work. The, the publishing industry is paying them this tiny little amount here, tiny little amount there. Yeah, Spike, people assume I'm a stay-at-home mom, but I work 50 hours per week at a traditional job. And there again, I think I, I have so many friends who are stay-at-home moms. I think that stay-at-home moms are wonderful. It's just a different thing. And the problem isn't that being a stay-at-home mom is worse. The problem is that if you are a work-from-home parent, you are you have a job on top of it. If you're a stay-at-home parent, your primary job is your kids, which is great because giving yourself selflessly to the next generation is incredibly noble. But at the same time, it's like, so if you have a, a, a career on top of that, but someone says you don't have a career, your whole career is your kids, that's implying that your career doesn't exist. So that's implying that writing, writing is not a career. And that leads to the devaluing of literature and the, the continuing of the industry saying we don't have to pay writers. You'd be shocked at how many writers would work for free. I really, really, really hate it. It's a whole thing that I could go on about all day. I do not write for free. I really hate when people try to get other people to write for free. I try not to get too mad at my friends who write for free and submit to publications for free, but I'm also like, hey, you're you're driving down the market value for me when you do that, but I try not to be an asshole about it. But like the truth is like, no, work deserves payment. Um so I, as Amy says here, yes, I think it has a lot to do with the pressures women put on each other as well. I had someone ask me why didn't I didn't include that I was a mother in my bio online. So I think that there is something to be said here for like men writers at the top of these things. They get like, wow, look at this man. He's amazing. And these women are treated as like, oh, are you, you're able to write. Your husband allows you to write from his career. Like you don't even know that these women, if they're married, you don't even know if they're straight. You don't know anything about them. But you're over here, like a lot of people make that assumption. And it's like, or maybe this person could be supporting an entire family of five on their writing if this shit paid better. So anyway, um, anyway, that's a, I just went on a tangent there. Because I think at the end of the day, the villain is always really corporations that make people compete this hard for low paying writing gig like that's fucking stupid writing should be valued more dude okay let's uh take a look at some of the stuff about this i'm gonna pull up some other things um so there's a lot going on here there's a lot going on here so we're gonna pull up celeste ang on twitter so as we talked about celeste ang is not she's not sonia or dawn she's a different person but she is the author of the book Little Fires Everywhere, which became, I think, a Netflix or Hulu series. So she's been very successful. She is friends with Sonia. And she made this thread on Twitter to basically defend Sonia. Sonia, who plagiarized. Now, for some context that I don't think I went into that much. So Celeste was quoted in the original New York Times article a couple times. Celeste... Also, oh, wait, I didn't even know this. Wait, I didn't even get to this. Ariana says, one thing that ties into your point about writing pay, one of the reasons Dawn sued is because she was worried she wouldn't be able to write about her kidney donation. Yeah, dude, if Dawn wanted to publish a story with her own kidney donation letter in it, and then Sonia already has published a story with Dawn's original work in it, 
No, dude. What if Dawn wants to publish a, a nonfiction piece that includes her letter in it? But Sonya's acting like she owns the copyright to Dawn's work. Fucking ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. Ugh. Anyway. So here's what Celeste does. So we're going to go off on this. Uh, Celeste basically went up on Twitter talking about this. Uh, so anyway, the writing group that they were a part of, they were part of this writing nonprofit called Grub Street from Boston. They were also part of this writing group called the Chunky Monkeys. Uh, this writing group, I will add, included both women and men. Everyone keeps acting like the Chunky Monkeys was just a group of like high school mean girls. No, there were men in this writing group. Dawn was not in the Chunky Monkeys group. This was after she left Boston. But this group had Celeste in it, had Sonia in it, had a few other people. Um, so the group, uh, the group, the Chunky Monkeys was named that because I think the idea was that they take different chunks of writing at a time and revise them. Fine. It's kind of a cute name. I'm fine with that. So anyway, this is what Celeste is saying. So Celeste starts with Dawn pitched this article to the New York Times herself. I don't know if that's true because I've seen conflicting information on that. I, I've, uh, we'll, we're going to pull up stuff about that. Some people have said uh, Dawn pitched the article herself to the New York Times and here's proof of it. Other people have said Dawn did not pitch the article to the New York Times. Here's here's a proof of letters of the writer of the article struggling to trying to get in contact with Dawn for the story. So I don't know for sure. There's various things about this out there. Um, second, she was not part of our writing group or friend group. I met her once. Most of us didn't know her well, if at all. I never heard anyone mention her name before this. Okay, well, Sonia clearly... Uh, also, this isn't true because Celeste DMs get leaked too, and Celeste is the one yelling, fuck Dawn in her one kidney. Uh, and people made quote graphics out of this with Celeste's, like, author photo as text. <laughs> quote from a famous author, fuck Dawn in her one kidney. So, yeah, that, uh that that continues so let's continue so celeste says people get catty in group texts and emails dawn was not and had never been in this group she subpoenaed them to see what we said and then gave them to the new york times i agree that people can be rude in the dms when they think they're just having a private conversation with their friend i can be a bitch in the dm sometimes too when i'm just talking to rk i can be like you see what fucking keemstar did i'm not i mean i did just say that on a live stream but anyway <laughs> My point is people aren't always as nice and professional in the DMs as they're going to be face to face or in a professional setting. Um, exactly. If you never knew her, why'd you bitch about herself? Right? Right? Um, and I agree with Amy. Celeste does lose credibility as more information becomes public. See, this is where we're getting to like the drama part of it. This is all just like we got through the main story. This is uh, of what happened before the New York Times published the piece. Now, this is all in the past two weeks since the New York Times published the piece, all the drama that's happened since. So we're just straight up talking internet drama right now. We're fucking spilling tea on the internet. That's what we're doing. Uh, hope you weren't expecting to have something academic to talk about today. Although we are going to talk about like uh, writer related things about this. And I will invite people on the stream shortly. Um, also, let me know in the chat if you'd be interested in coming on the stream to talk to me one on one or out loud about this because that could be really fun. I'd love to do a call in thing. I think it's cool when people do that. So let me know in the chat if you're interested in that. I'll get you the link sent. Okay, so then Celeste continues and says, you're allowed to feel how you want about what Sonia did, what Dawn did, the caddy emails, and for sure what I said, but please, for the love of God, get your facts right. So, okay, here's here's where Celeste tries to paint Dawn as a stalker. But then we get a, a new, uh, some new information that shows that uh, Celeste is uh, not quite, not quite accurate about what she's saying here. Yeah, Evie, if you want to call in, you're welcome. Well, I'll let you, I'll give you guys the link to call in in a few minutes. I agree with Kate here. Who cares if Dawn pitched the article? Who cares if Celeste did or didn't know? It's not relevant, right? I don't know. I don't know if maybe Celeste was trying to clear something up because maybe someone accused her of knowing her or accused her of something. I don't know. Um, so here's what Celeste says. She says, this is a person who called my friend's work and asked them to suspend her, who got her phone number, which she didn't even have before, and texted her constantly. I don't claim there was no wrong done to her, but this seems disproportionate. Um, so here's what happened. So Celeste basically is like, Dawn's a stalker, guys. She she did this. Okay, but here, let's let's look here real quick. Let's look here at what's going on here. 
So here's a new tweet by someone named Morand who says, uh, after a couple days, all these things Celeste Aang wrote actually make them seem worse. My friend's work was Dawn's work too. Sonya had a higher ranking position. She makes it seem like Dawn was actively stalking Sonya, finding her work address and boss. So apparently what seemed to happen here was that, no, what happened was that Dawn and Sonya were working in the same writing organization. It wasn't that Dawn was calling Sonya's work. It's that Dawn also worked there too. And Sonya was a higher ranking position and she was kind of exposing what she did. So there's that. Um, it's a, this person says Celeste Ang knowingly lied about the private chats being subpoenaed to make Don Dorland look petty and crazy. This is a new level of pettiness. All these blue ticked established and successful writers. I can't believe how cruel they are. Um, so basically that's kind of what happened there. Boop. I believe there's more to this. Um, so then there's this, uh, person from the group named Becky who does, she goes on, she goes on Twitter as well, this person, Becky, to apologize to Dawn and say, yeah, I was part of this group and I, I feel bad about this. I should have been nicer to Dawn. Um, so Becky says, a suggestion, but one cool thing grub writers could do right now is appoint an intern to focus exclusively on combating false information that continues to circulate about Dawn. It would be an education in citizen journalism and good God, this is the least we can do. So she's basically like, yeah, Dawn was kind of done wrong here. I, I, I can say that. Um, so then I believe Celeste replies to her and says, respectfully, you are determined to misunderstand the situation. So there's nothing more to say here. Wishing you all the very best. Basically peace and love, sending love and light, gaslight gatekeep girl boss. And Becky says, the only situation I've been determined to misunderstand is the one that allowed lies about a perfectly lovely human being to persist among us for years. If you're looking for more to say about it, you can start with, I'm so unbelievably sorry. So this is basically saying like, uh, yeah, you guys were all shit talking Dawn and making her out to be this evil person. And it turns out actually Sonia had been plagiarizing from her. I will agree with Kayla here that says this seems like so much miscommunication that escalated with a sprinkle of plagiarism. I 100% agree. Because until the plagiarism, this was all just like people miscommunicating with each other and uh, Sonia thinking that Dawn was being kind of obnoxious and Dawn not knowing that Sonia was being mean to her behind her back. And like, at the end of the day, those are interpersonal problems. That does not in need to involve the whole internet. That does not need to involve publications. That does not need to involve outside commentary. Those are interpersonal issues, right? People have issues with other people in their life all the time. Not a big deal. When the plagiarism happened, that's when this all became a very big deal. Um, now let me see, what was I going to get up on Twitter? Um, I wanted to see some of more of what Celeste said. Oh, did I close out Celeste's thing? Hold up one second. She was saying a bunch of shit. So, um, Do, 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 do. I was gonna pull up. I wanted to find the DMs. Where were the DMs? I had them a second ago. I'll find the DMs. One second. Ah, oh, my computer's frozen. Hold on. Um, boop, 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 boop. Gonna get the DMs. Gonna find the DMs. Oh, maybe it's on, oh, it's probably from this account Kidney Gate has them. We're going to look at Kidney Gate. <laughs> going to look at Kidney Gate. Oh, so this account started to just, oh, Dawn follows it. That's funny. Um, okay. So this is Kidney Gate. Um, so, okay, apparently also Dawn Dorland has been teaching creative writing workshops to homeless women for a while. Dawn seems like just a nice person, even if she did take some of this too far, but I don't know how much of that was her versus her lawyer. Um, do, 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 do. Where are the DMs, guys? Where are the DMs? I want to read them. Um... 
You know, while I'm looking for the DMs, does anyone want to come on the stream? Here's what I'm going to do. If anyone wants to call into the show, you can click this link right here and join. You can turn your camera on or off, whatever you want. If you want to be on camera or just voice or whatever, you can click this link and join while I search for these DMs and then we'll have a fun little conversation. That'll be fun. And I'm also going to pull up the stuff that Zab posted on the subreddit. Um, let's see, uh, Don versus Sonia DMs. Let's look them up. Um, let's see, where's the DMs? Where's the DMs? Uh, boop, 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 boop. here we go. Here's the DMs. Um, DMs. Um, let's see. Sonia Celeste DMs. <laughs> Where's the ones between Sonia and Celeste? Those are the wild ones. Where she's like, fuck Dawn and her one kidney. Here's one that I just found. We'll have two people come on in just a second to talk. Uh, oh, there's people who want to come on. That's awesome. So this DM that was leaked. So, okay. So uh, I don't know who this one person is, but they're like, maybe the weirdest Dawn Facebook post. Yes. Sweet pick like by Chris last night with UCLA kidney transplant surgeon, Dr. Jeffrey Veal. Last year, Dr. Veal transplanted my kidney into a recipient. Friends, it was he who proclaimed that my little bean gushed urine when it was sewn in. So she's just having fun talking about her her kidney donation and this person is like god is this for real there's so much going on in this paragraph don wrote to me directly to say she'd heard i'd written a story about kidney donation and she wants to read it um so yeah everyone yeah anyway anyway i'll stop sharing screen and invite people onto the stream right now so Hey, we've got Grim Goose Girl and we've got Genius. Anyway, Thanks for anyway. joining, y'all. Oh, stop sharing the screen. Like, you can onto the stream right now. So. Oh, sorry. I don't have my hey, headphones on. That's why I can't hear anybody. Hold on. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Oh, stop sharing the screen. Hi. Oh, sorry. Someone's playing me an audio in the background while talking. You got to mute uh, the what's coming out of YouTube because otherwise it's going to echo. Okay. Sorry. I think that was me. <laughs> okay. Cool. So awesome. Glad you guys are able to be here. What do you all, what are your guys thoughts on a bad art friend? Who's a bad art friend? What do you think's going on here? What, what, what stuck out to y'all about this? In all honesty, the only thing I wanted to say, and then I was just going to like hop right back out is just to reiterate your original point savvy, which is just, this just seems like bad communication. It just seems like two friends that had like a misunderstanding not necessarily that either one of them was in the wrong per se. It's just they were bad for each other. And then one of them decided to make it public. And then somehow the New York Times got involved. And now it's like everybody's business when it really, really shouldn't have ever been, you know? Exactly. This was just like, okay, these two friends have different communication styles. They're probably, they're probably just not compatible in a friendship. Let's just work it out and move on. Yeah, the fact that the plagiarism <laughs> got involved made it blow up, dude. This is why communication is important, y'all. This is why it's important to to make sure other people have a clear understanding of what's going on. And, and I've I, had, I oh, what? Sorry. <laughs> I've had plenty of people that I've like absolutely hated at work, and I've definitely been that person to like get with my friends in the DMs and be like, uh that like really hurt my feelings, and like this was so annoying. But we never brought it to work and then we never made it public you know <laughs> right exactly yeah it's one of those things where it's like if you're going to talk about it in private so i think that's what that's what uh celeste and sonia were trying to do was just talk about it in private but the fact that they were doing this conspiring to commit plagiarism is the problem here <laughs> because you can't do that that's not right that's not right i appreciate you coming on that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Bye. Genia, what's up? How are you doing? Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. How's it going? 
Okay, first of all, can I correct you about my name? Sure, did I say it wrong? Uh, no, yes and no. The name is Jean. Jean. Uh, because my full name is Evgenia Yurivna Kaznova Zagranichnova, and I don't think you can actually say that. Okay, so I'll call you Jean. I'll call you Jean. What's up, Jean? <laughs> uh, good. First of all, I would like to um, point out that you were slightly incorrect about this being new among writers. Maybe it has been exasperated by the big five uh, publishing structure. I don't know. But I'm writing like I have uh, read a lot of stuff from the early uh, years of science fiction when they basically were, again, writing for pennies and, as somebody noted, for volume. Mm -hmm. And um, you had like people who like got what a story. Harlan Allison got a, a story of his rejected and then send the, to the guy who rejected them a dead fish every day for a year. Oh yeah, no, I don't think this is new at all. This this shit happens all the time. Yeah, so, no, I I agree with you. It's not new. Absolutely, writing people are not. I don't think you should. I think like having writing and the law together is a problem. I think there is an issue here of like very convoluted um, copyrights law. And I'm not saying that the copyright law should be just dropped, but at some point, just having to engage with them costs so much money that it's prohibitive. And backing off can cost you anything. This is a thing that was not mentioned about why didn't they just back off? Why did they keep escalating? So a lot of lawyers work as a percentage of the fee you they get at the end. Yeah. So if you have a broke writer that tries to protect their work and they do not go with this to court, they will have to pay for the lawyer. They cannot afford to pay for the lawyer. And yeah, the lawyer can drag this for years, both of them, if both of the lawyers are working like this. So... I don't think the use of the lawyers is the thing that makes anybody the bad art friend. I cannot imagine anybody ever saying fuck her and her one kidney. Like, for That's real. Rude. That's very rude. Well, actually, while we're at that, before we talk to Evie and also Spike's here. What's up, Spike? Hey, y'all. Um, hey. Before we do that, let's check out these DMs real quick. So here's the DMs, guys. Thank you to Maya. Shout out to Maya who tagged me in them on Twitter. I appreciate that. So here's the DMs, right? Oh, that God. Uh, between uh, Celeste and uh, so Celeste is on this side and then over here is Sonia so so basically Celeste over here says so incredibly awesome that you won it for the kidney story fuck you Don wow that's rude fuck you Don what, what? okay so then then Sonia says I know right that story has taken such a beating as you well know and I'm still fighting to get it out there Dawn is going to freak out but my lawyers have assured me she can freak out all she wants there's nothing she can do and then Celeste says yes I'm so happy for you has that story never been published wasn't it part of American short fiction and then Sonia says it was but after Dawn came after me American short fiction took it off their website and the audio version was taken down too. Dawn tried to get me to say a doc saying I never publish any iteration ever again. It's like she's so scared of it. This woman is nuts. And then Celeste says extra fuck her. She's so awful and I hope she's writhing into pieces under her giant hat. Dawn wears big hats. She's kind of a hippie. Um, and then uh uh amy yes this is about the nea grant this is about the nea grant yes um and then um oh also amanda's here what's up amanda um and then so then uh sonia says uh it did thankfully just get published in a small anthology which i haven't publicized yet i have no doubt she will writhe but thankfully she's given me a very strong education in how to weather storms like this they're only talking, they're talking about how much they hate Dawn over here. And then there's another DM, which I will pull up in a second because my screen froze. But in the meantime, I'm going to say hello to Evie, Amanda, and Spike. What is up, y'all? How are you guys doing? Hey. Hello. Um, oh, hey. wait, here's the, here's the DMs right here. So this, this is where Celeste continues to be mean. So Celeste says to Sonia, Dawn Dorland and her one kidney can go fuck themselves. Which is, that's very rude. Like, 
Like, That's excessive. Wow. Okay, sometimes you're rude to your friends. You gotta make fun of the fact that they donated a kidney. Like, that's not very nice. It reminds me of, you guys remember when Nick Cannon tried to diss Eminem by telling him that, by like trying to make fun of him for raising another man's child? It's like, you're making fun of him for adopting kids? Wow, what a terrible Just, thing to do. Like, it says way more like, about that's you. That's not a diss, bro. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um... So yeah, I can't help feeling yeah. like people feel guilty for not yet. I agree that this is so like, tell me, uh, tell me you're an asshole without telling me you're an asshole in one sentence. <laughs> Fuck her. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> um, dude, these DMs are insane. Uh, so then over here said uh, Celeste says. You did nothing wrong. Dawn can go fuck her one kidney. <laughs> the level of vitriol, especially for someone who didn't know anything about this woman, apparently. Yeah, remember Celeste's tweet that we just read? Okay. Celeste's tweet from October of 2021, from a couple weeks ago, said, I had never heard of Dawn before. She wasn't our friend. I had never heard of her before. I never once heard her name. Here's some DMs from June 2018. This is a year, two years and four months earlier. Three years and four months earlier. Goddamn, three years and four months earlier. And over here, Celeste is on the record saying, Dawn can go fuck her one kidney. Uh, sounds like you've heard of Dawn. Who else did you think you wanted to go fuck their kidney, dude? Um, That's that friend you call when you want to be petty. The one that you know is going to be yeah. just as toxic as you are. And you're like, let me tell you about this. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I have my friends to be petty with, but I'm not going to be like, oh no, I've never heard of this person. Literally, there is evidence you've heard of this yeah. person. But see, there's a huge difference between being petty in like a a, a specific friend setting because we all need to vet like that we all need to express the worst parts of ourselves sometimes but there's a huge difference between that and like making it a public ass short story and making money off of it like even just writing it down for herself and her friends is like a little ingrid joke i wouldn't have much of a problem with but like you did this you need to like sleep in the bed you made this crap yeah, but exactly. you can't look like a shitty, fr a shitty friend publicly. I mean, if somebody you have a friend who is trying to garner all this attention and you want to make a quick buck, well, other people are going to care about this. So let me just mm -hmm. make this story. Oh, sorry, that hurt your feelings. I don't actually, not like we're really good friends or anything. People are just, she saw an opportunity and she went with it. Absolutely. And now she's mad that Dawn is messing it well, up for her. By the way, Amanda says, okay, so if anyone here uh, has stuff going on in the background, no problem. Just if you can mute your mic when you're not talking, then when you want to talk, unmute your mic, whoever is due, or just everyone. Uh, that would be cool just for anyone who uh, is struggling to isolate noises. I wanted to ask Amanda Jones, are you were the one who mentioned you donated a kidney before? I'm interested yes. in your thoughts on the story from that perspective. Can you tell me about what, what that perspective is like? So, so I, you know, like I, I do get that, that Dawn's just like a, a fairly extra human being, you know, and, um, but so it takes, it takes months to donate a kidney. Um, you have to do tests repeatedly, um, you know, uh, it takes a fair amount of time. There can be, uh, you know, there can be many days afterwards, um, I mean, there's certain medications you can't take afterwards um and it can be a little sorry i'm like moving out of my camera here it oh no you're little, totally fine don't worry about it you're all good <laughs> it can be a little a little, uh, a little isolated um because you know you're not doing it in a group um and uh and sometimes people act like it's a thing to do you know what the doctors are working with when i was going through my my um my test was like I could never do this. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, she's saying this to me. <laughs> and his doctor works with kidney patients all the time. Um, so I can completely understand the, besides, but beyond what like NATO donor organizations want you to, want you to and talk, especially if you have a fairly, you, ideally you're in the hospital and then you're out and you're done. But, um, and like, I, but, so they just want you to talk about it so they can encourage more. So just like yeah, it is. It's a 
it's a lot to go through and it goes, it lasts for a long time. And so it's helpful to have other people who know going through this experience. And, um, and if you can make it look like a good deal, which it kind of is and kind of isn't, then then that, you know, might encourage other people to donate. One of the other things I've done is I've done research with other organizations on trying to get because it's not something that was focused on for a long time, but there are certain groups um, that still don't donate in very large numbers or a global majority. So um, there's been a lot of struggle trying to get folks who are not white to donate kidneys. Um, so, you know, it's like it's still unusual enough of a procedure that, um, that some folks will think you're nuts if you choose to do it. So uh, yeah. I don't blame her for wanting to have a group of people she could talk to. You know, um, the other thing is the fact that, that Sonia had a position, somewhat of a position of leadership in that um, in that group, and for her to be behaving like even in I don't know, I would. You know, she's supposed to be something that people look up to. I can understand talking like that with your friends, but I don't know if I would want to do it with people. Uh, that's all I had to say. Thank you for letting me talk. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm curious, <laughs> Amanda, from your perspective of having donated a kidney, someone brought up, I don't know if it was you or if it was someone up else earlier in the chat who had brought up um, that in kidney donation groups, it's actually encouraged to be regularly sharing these updates with people, kind of like what Dawn was doing. So while some people mm -hmm. may have found Dawn's updates obnoxious, apparently for organ donors, that's actually fairly normal. Is that true? Has that been true in your experience? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in the organizations okay. will do things like um, they do walks and they, you know, they and donors together so they feel less alone you know um so it's definitely um it's definitely hard to talk about it they, de they definitely try to make it feel special you know um i donated to my to my relative there's a, they like gave me a little silver frame with a picture of the two of us together you know so they do try to like uh you know they do try to make it really you know, even though it is, it's surgery. <laughs> yeah. I like what Emma says here. This needs to be in the Sean Boston series. RK, if you're still listening, we got to figure out some kind of organ donor plagiarism drama, which we, that's the thing too. Cancel Sean Boston has a lot of stuff that parallels YouTube drama that's going on in real life. Well, we didn't take people's words. That's the difference. You don't copy and paste someone's text directly. Uh, and then Amanda, the one other thing I wanted to ask you too, was that uh, somebody sure. in the chat was saying that I hope that, you know, the backlash that Dawn received here doesn't discourage other people from donating kidneys. Do you think this this whole controversy would ha is going to have any impact on that at all? Or is it going to educate more people? What what do you think the impact might be on kidney donation overall? Oh, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, yeah, I hope it's positive. Um, I do find the, the suggestion that she donated for it and sure blood a little. A little crazy. Um, it, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a lot to do to yourself for a tendon because people, I mean, it, like anything, eventually, about it, you know. So mm -hmm. to take give away an organ, <laughs> I mean, it's possible, but like I still think even so, it was like a, it was an amazing thing to do. So. I don't, I hope at least I mean, at least it's bringing kidney donation into the into the conversation for a while. So hopefully more people will think about it. And the fact that she did a Samaritan donation, that is, she donated to somebody she knows. Um, those donations are even more rare. There was like a This American Life podcast episode about one a decade before. So this kind of donation doesn't get a lot of, um, a lot of discussion. So um, I think it's, I think that which is good, people are aware that this is a thing that you can do. You know, mm -hmm. Besides just have, donating to somebody who you know who happens to need it, you can also donate. If you don't match, you can donate yeah. to a stranger. So, um, yeah. Yeah, That's, absolutely. And I think that that was important with this too, is that right. before <laughs> this whole controversy, mm -hmm. the concept of donating a kidney to a stranger was probably not something that anyone had really ever thought about much before other i mean dawn obviously had there have been people who did but it wasn't as widely talked about as it is now so maybe that's some good that can come out of this at least and i can uh, attest to that as somebody who i'm an organ donor on my driver's license but i've never really thought about donating while i'm still alive so if nothing else the story is like huh 
maybe I can look into how to donate organs. So I can say, at least for me, it was informative while also being like, ooh, this is a mess. But yeah, I think it could be good. That's awesome. I actually uh, helped my friend um, give um, marrow donation, which is like also a donation that you do while you're alive. It's a bit different, but it's also a whole process. And I'm like... I'm looking at it from a little pers personal perspective because my best friend who is now deceased, got we got an extra year with him thanks to somebody donating part of their liver. Mm. So I'm like, is, is like really giving a bit of attention really too much to pay for this? I got an extra year with my best friend. I'm like, you can, whoever that person was, you can have my time. You really can. Like, I will personally call you and tell you you're a good person once a week for a year, if that's what it takes. Right, yeah, and that's the thing, is where, like, when that article said, like, you know, Dawn went through an invasive surgery and donated a whole organ, like, her being obnoxious on social media, is that that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things? Like, no, I don't think so, but then again, I'm obnoxious, so that's why I'm a little bit of a biased judge re uh, reading this, because I'm, like, just like Dawn, I'm a very direct communicator, I'm make friends or I trust friends too quickly I become uh, obnoxious and yell about things too like I get it I get her she makes sense to me I I think Sonia has a lot of things going for her but she she's the kind of person that scares me people who don't communicate directly scare the shit out of me and that's probably a personal thing I need to work on but just the concept of someone this whole time could just be being polite and not truly considering a friend like that is mind-blowing sorry I didn't ask yet Evie or Spike can you guys what are your thoughts on the whole thing overall who do you guys think is the bad art friend what do you guys think about this whole thing you can go ahead Spike Oh, sorry. You said okay. I'm not gonna lie. You said Spike, and I literally didn't realize you were talking. Yeah, it's Sarah. Sorry, your name's Spike <laughs> on the screen, so I've been calling you Spike. No, I've been that's fine. You Spike in the chat because when you were Emma's mom, you were Spike, or I can call you Sarah, whatever you want. No, it's fine. I just hit space. It's just not don't your fault. call you late for dinner. True. No, okay. As someone who probably, um, I probably relate more to Sonya, not the plagiarism and the being awful. But I think this is also educational to people who are like me. Because if I had someone that I knew that was a friend and all of a sudden I see them posting on Facebook about it all the time about this donation, I'm the person that's like, I mean, you can give the kidney without telling everyone you gave a kidney. But I didn't know and someone told me in the chat too that it's encouraged to have those groups and to talk about it a lot. So I think that's a benefit of it too. And I think I relate because I've been Don. I used to be this friend that had all the people around them and I had all these friends and things mm -hmm. were great. But then I ran into too many Sonyas. So now I'm like, okay, clearly I need to stop doing this with people. So I think direct communication is definitely important, but this just sounds like a one-sided friendship. And the fact that it was so easy for um, Sonya to turn and make it into something that she was making fun of. And since Don was so quick to escalate, within her legal rights so quickly. I think at the core of it, it's really a not shit friend and someone who was too attached and got really hurt and it escalated. And I think that's the sad part of it. Even though I get where Sonya is coming from, it doesn't have to get to this point and she didn't have to be a bitch about it. She could have just not said anything. Yeah. I think that's interesting because there's a whole thing about perspective here too, that people talk about. Like, I know that like someone once tweeted, there was a Twitter thing going around a little while ago where someone's like, is the stereotype about writers being introverted too? And I replied and was like, it's not true for me. I want to have 15 writer roommates and we all live together in a hype house and, and spend time all in each other's circles constantly. And we can make YouTube videos together and be loud and have parties every night. And people in the chat or, or in the comments were like, this is literally my anxiety worst nightmare. What are you talking it's about? It's so like, funny that you say that because I'm literally writing a book. I'm not even sure I'm going to show another soul. Like I'm so okay with being by myself and I have a close group of friends and like I can be social I go out and I do things like we're gonna have a ton of fun in New Orleans but also if we sat at RK's house and watched Netflix all weekend and drank I'd be like oh this is so fun like I just I'm yeah. not that person so I also find that interesting that people are like that they want to live on like a commune and have all these people like, only living urban in a commune people try to get me to live on a oh, rural commune and I'm like oh hell no I'm living on a commune in the city like i need to be surrounded by people in the midst of being surrounded by people okay there is no, no open i cannot land i cannot i am i can't do city I but I can't polyamorous do so this brings like my yeah. style is i 
I rotate, a per I always have like only one or two people next to me, but they're on constant rotation and there's constantly somebody there. Yeah, that makes sense too. And I think that with the, what I'm getting at here is the perspective of this all, right? Is that a lot of people, when they start reading this story, they're either like me, who's relating to Dawn and being like, yes, obviously they were friends. They were in writing groups together. How could they not be friends? I'm friends with every writer I've ever met. And then I look back and I'm like, oh shit, a lot of them probably didn't think of me as a friend. But then there's a lot of people reading this who relate to Sonia and are like, oh my God, Dawn is being like, she is talking to her a lot. She really won't leave her alone. Like this must be so overwhelming. I'd be so anxious in her position. So it's really just like, it's so much perspective from the beginning of like, which of these positions, and that's why this is at the end of the day, I think a failure of communication. Cause at the end of the day is like, which of these positions can I understand and things like that? Can yeah. I ask a question? Oh, sorry, Amanda says she's got to head out. Thanks so much for being here and talking about your experience, Amanda. I appreciate it. Bye Amanda. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, all right. Uh, what was your question, um, Jean? Okay. So there was a mention in the article about uh, portraying uh, Don as the white savior. And if I remember correctly, the white savior tropes talks not just about being overly self-congratulating, but specifically not actually doing any real good while Dawn actually did the real good that she asked to be congratulated for. I think there is a mix. So I think Yeah, I think can... it's a matter of perspective on that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the way anyone here, this is my take on it, and then I'll ask all of you guys on the stream and then everyone in the chat your take on it too. I think the white savior trope is, first of all, that you are doing something for a self-serving purpose, but you can do real good. But the idea is that it stems from this idea that you kind of see yourself as above someone else and and can do that thing for them because you see them as someone who isn't capable. Like I talked about this with Dave Hollis. Like he was an example of it when I read his uh, book and did a review on it where he was like, I'm only looking to adopt kids from Ethiopia and I'm only fostering black children and I'm expecting to get to adopt them because I'm doing a better job raising them than their crack addict mom and stuff oh like that. God. It's like, no, Dave, that is white saviorism. You're acting like you think you're above these other people. So but that's, she wasn't yeah. But no, like I don't she... think Dawn herself was doing white savior shit. I think the character in the story who was not quite like, Dawn. But I'm like trying to figure out what was the thing that she thought that the character couldn't do, like filter blood so okay ariana says the white savior part this is the, the, the um uh. yeah, dawn's actual kidney went to an orthodox jewish man the white savior thing was only in the fiction it wasn't real life dawn was not although okay. some people were trying to portray her that way sorry well, I okay, sarah so and evie had something to say about it, this sarah what was your thoughts on this i was just Thank gonna you. say that i think it I think it's people that thought it was that because of the portrayal if you see someone who's doing a good thing and they're talking about it all the time your initial thought is this is very performative you are in this position where you can help this person, this disenfranchised person. Like Dave Hollis, he talks about having it. He's being an ally. He has an ally Got tattoo. Got the ally tattoo. That's why it's saying getting a tattoo that says allies. Right. And it's like, Dave, as, as much as I appreciate you talking about issues and being an ally, it's almost like, well, because I am in this position of being a cisgender white male in corporate America, of course I have to use my advantage to help all of these poor disenfranchised people and it's like the words are true but the intention behind it is look at me i'm doing good things and i think it's more so that nuance than someone just helping somebody else just from my perspective yeah so like what cutie pie mania here says is white saviorism does more danger than good and it's usually about centering whiteness though not it's not always white people but it's like going on a mission trip and thinking like oh i'm gonna go on this mission trip and build these houses for this impoverished community well maybe the local builders could be using that business and they just need money in their economy and you as a builder are not better at building things than someone who is that's a, uh, so that's Dawn what herself by... is not a white savior the problem is like what amy is saying here is that people on Twitter have been trying to portray her that way, but that could just be because Twitter is uh, awful. So who knows? <laughs> also, I, um, oh. I just don't see, like, she was talking about her own experience. She wasn't, like, talking about anybody else's ability or non-ability, so. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so um, sorry. I, I think so, I'm glad more... Montgomery's here. We love Montgomery. Glad you're here. Glad you made it. Saying her not being a good person doesn't make her an evil person. It could be that I understand her annoyance with Dawn. It doesn't excuse her actions, but I can see how annoyance could have spiraled into something much uglier and crueler. Yeah, exactly. I completely agree. Uh, Evie, what were you saying? Oh, so on like the white savior thing, and this is actually interesting because this is something that like has been being talked about quite well by like a lot of people, like um. FD Signifier just like did a whole great thing oh, dude, on I that. I love his videos. Hi- yeah, Shout out to highly FD recommend. Signifier. His he's great. I love his channel. So so great. And uh, from what I understand, it is specifically a white person. Like uh, people of color can exhibit certain traits, but it is specifically a white thing because it is very much from a place of extreme privilege and being white and usually being Christian or otherwise involved in Christian based religions is generally part of it because missionary trips tend to be through religious organizations but it's the idea that you can come in because of your privilege you must come save these poor downtrodden people because of course since you're so much better off than them you must do this thing because they're like incapable of doing it themselves and you don't actually bother to interact with them first as people they are a monolith to you they are just like like you're not helping people specifically like in nigeria with like a drought you're just helping black people in africa there's no distinction between like groups of people and individual issues you do not bother to actually educate yourself on what the actual issues for their community are like there are places where like education is the main issue um maybe small business loans are the issue and the local economy and there are other places where like literally just access to water are the issue but if you go and dig a well in a place where the main issue is education like that doesn't do anything and you've just taken resources away from the actual issue so it usually does end up doing more harm than good because you're not actually addressing any root issues and you're perpetuating a lot of really negative ideas about whatever group of people you're trying to help like my the example I always think about is Mother Teresa and how everyone's like oh she was so good and she literally just brought these poor people to her hospitals to die so she could baptize them after her death like that's literally what she did did? wow I didn't know that yeah oh shit that's awful it is so deeply effed up but we all remember her as like this great person who helped all the indians and stuff and like no she literally made sure that like her hospitals did like the bare minimum to maybe keep some people alive occasionally like when she got sick she went to other hospitals like she went to like good hospitals Um, and like that's what i think yeah yeah, so there's what amy gets lit says is that there's i completely agree that there is nuance the the white savior thing there are some instances of it where it's obvious when you see someone like dave hollis and the way he talks about fostering an adoption it's obvious when you saw Mm -hmm. like micah stauffer who the woman who adopted a boy from china assuming that she could obviously give him a better life than anyone in china which was his home country and that was also for clout he knew and that was for clout right there was a self-serving element to that there i don't think that donating a kidney is really like that that whole thing just like i don't see how it relates here but i agree with amy that there's nuance to it and i think Mm -hmm. it's not always clear from like a very specific example what the person's motivations were Mm -hmm. or whether what they're doing is actually helpful. And some of it does come from if the thing is actually helpful and actually meant to help the other thing. Cause I think sometimes people get mad and are like, don't talk about white saviorism because all you're doing is discouraging white people from trying to help others. And it's like, no "No, white people helping others is a good thing. It's all about, are you doing it because there's an actual thing to help with and you're qualified to help in that way. And you you can help in that way and you're not helping and you're doing it because you see someone else as an equal and want to help them with something that you have the ability to do at that time. And in the case of a kidney donation, she has a kidney. And also the person who got her kidney was also white. So it's like the white savior thing doesn't even really apply to, to Dawn at all. I think that was a piece of the story was more so like um, the main character of the fictional story was a Chinese woman who was an alcoholic and she needed a kidney. And then someone even brought up that like alcoholics don't usually get kidney donations or something. So it seemed like there was no uh, 
research done, but I don't know. It's a story, and also, like, everyone should be able to get a kidney donation. Anyway, oh. uh, my point is that there's a lot more nuance to this, yeah. but I also want to continue to hear from all you guys. Also, welcome to rain, rainy days. Glad you made it. Yeah. Oh, can... Hey, oh, can I just? Sorry, what, sorry <laughs> you want to say something? Oh, sorry. I was just gonna ask if I could just give my broad overview and then like pass on the torch because I'm sorry, I just kind of went off on the white savior thing because it just annoys the hell out of me. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Evie, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, say, say your thing, and then uh, whoever yeah. wants to talk next can go ahead. Yeah. So my broad overview of this is, first of all, like people demonize atten like attention seeking can be definitely very annoying don't get me wrong but attention seeking in itself unless you're doing something negative like you broke a glass to get attention it's not really a bad thing it can be emotionally exhausting but you're there's no negative consequences to it also like I see so many instances of men doing things that are clearly attention seeking, like oh, flex culture. Flex culture is just attention seeking. Let's to be, be fair. I do it. I'm flexing on people. I'm always taking yeah. hot, it's, hot gym selfies, being like, "Look yeah. at me! Look how hot I am!" Uh, guys, I should have never started working out. I was vain already. This is just making it worse. <laughs> yeah, but like that's fine. It's like as long as you're not going like completely overboard. And everyone has their different definitions of that, and that's how you like find your friend group because your friends are the people that tolerate you basically like they, they tolerate all your weird quirks and you get along but the attention seeking is very annoying but why is it so much more annoying when a woman does it like is is my thing because i see so many instances of men doing like the same type of attention seeking crap and getting congratulated for it but then a woman who does a similar thing is like completely and utterly demonized and that's why I was saying in chat earlier that like a lot of this smells like misogyny to me because she seems like she was dogpiled on much more for being a woman who was doing these things than for just doing the things because when it comes down to it I don't like people doing things for not good intentions. That's why I have a lot of issues with religious organizations doing things because you're not doing it to be a good person. You're doing it to get into heaven a lot of the time. Some do. Some do. Don't get me wrong. And to post pictures of the kids you were with. Yeah. Uh -huh. in starving countries. Oh yeah. Like, like, see, I hate that. Instagram account. I think it's white savior Barbie. It's, it's oh my God. Let me see if I can find it. It's really funny. I want to pull it up. Yes, please. But it's like, Overall, she didn't do anything bad. She's not doing anything bad for attention. She's literally saving someone's life. And even if she's going about it in a cringy way, like, that's kind of almost irrelevant in the face of what she actually did. This isn't someone who helped out at a soup kitchen for an hour one weekend and brags about it for the next five years. Like, it's not proportional. So her, and also this is a hugely invasive surgery. Let's just be frank. There is a chance you could die on the operating table. There are permanent lifestyle changes that can have to occur, depending on what goes on. So the fact that Sonia not only, one, stayed in the group, two, interacted with all the posts on the group, specifically, it seems, to shit talk about her behind her back, took all of that, and then made a story that was so blatantly about her. Because again, you can make a story to ship post with your friends. It's a cruel thing to do, but like that's your own thing. You can do whatever you want, but she was not prepared for like the backlash, I think. And like you made it so obvious. You see, in my opinion, you either own a hit piece, you just went, Yeah, I wrote about you, so fucking what? Or you make it so that it's not actually a hit piece. Sonia tried to like do both, and like that's like to me i'm just over here like what did you expect sweetie you literally had her name in one of the drafts right if you can't if you cannot take it do not dish it out and also i'm sorry just taking someone's letter about their donated organ to like an act to their recipient is so deeply personal and then using that as a bludgeon to tell them what a terrible person they are is just so deeply inappropriate. Yeah, I agree. Like, it really is. And if she wanted to obscure it, if she wanted to 
claim the whole like, oh, this wasn't even about you. She could have done a liver transplant because you can still take a piece of your liver and all that stuff. It would actually fit in with the alcoholism theme more. So she just wanted to shit talk Dawn. Oh, she did. The it's story so obvious. Made more sense with the kidney transplant, dude. She the, no, the story would have made more sense. The liver transplant. She made it about a kidney <laughs> transplant because she wanted to make it about Dawn, dude. She did. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, exactly. And if you're a good writer, you could find a way to change that letter because that's what a writer does. Like, let's be frank, nothing original, like nothing original is under the sun. It's all about how you put it in your own words. So there were a bunch of people in the stream <laughs> chat talking about how, like, this was really the best you could do. I could write a cringier letter if I wanted to. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Also, I, I do have to ask um, the Orthodox Jewish man who got it. Was he actually white? Because there are non white. I think so he I, I'm was just white, curious. but I'm not positive. I don't know the details. I think he was yeah. based on what I read, but I can't yeah. be certain. Just because the the white savior thing kind of directly ha has to be directed specifically directed at like people of color like savior complex and white savior complex are different things just Definitely. so it's clear also yeah everyone in the chat why didn't she just change what organ it was why did it have to be a kidney that made it so obvious that she was just trying mm -hmm. to troll this lady because she's also, bitter here's bored. here's white savior barbie <laughs> here's white savior barbie is barbie and i know Barbie's can I know there's white savior Barbie, but no white savior Ken? Yeah, no uh -huh. white savior Ken, y'all. That's exactly, exactly. Well, yeah. there yeah, is all, not a yeah. single candle in all of these pictures I looked. Well, maybe yeah, I also, why do white Ken. women always be the ones being accused of being a white savior and not men? Like, again, this seems well, like I a know, lot Dan of misogyny. Is the number one person I, I would, accuse, so. Yeah, but that's like one guy. Look at all these pictures. All right, y'all, I, I, I want to say hello to anyway, go ahead. Rain and to Kayla, who have joined the stream. First of all, Rain, welcome to the stream. Glad you're here. Hi, Hi I'm yeah. Rain. They, them pronouns. Sounds great. Glad you're here, Rain. What's up? Me too, um, they, them. Okay, awesome. Um, I am a visual artist, and a lot of, like, the... I've heard the drama about this going around, like, passively on Tumblr, and... um. I wasn't fully, like, aware of the situation, but I was, like, watching the stream getting up to speed on it. And plagiarism is something that really bothers me as, like, just a thing. And, like, from my perspective as, like, a visual artist with this, um, one, I'm confused how they made it. I, I posted it earlier. I was like, how did they make it out of college and not know? That plagiarism can lose you your fucking career. Like, right? How do you this not know Degrassi this? Degrassi episode, y'all. You didn't even watch Degrassi. <laughs> she got kicked out of Banting for for plagiarizing her essay, and then she burned down the dorm. Degrassi's wild. So is the writing community, yeah. though. Writing community needs its own drama show. I love it. God, I guess that's uh, what this is. Also, Kayla, welcome. Glad you made it. Hello. <laughs> um, I have just, I'm this literally, I haven't heard of this until I saw your live stream and I was like, girl, this is crazy. <laughs> this, this is this whole so thing, dude. It's wild. You saying? And it's like, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I'm like, this seems like so much miscommunication. But then you threw in the plagiarism and now it's all gone to shiz. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's why the story is just so fascinating because it's like, does it did it have to be this big of a deal no but yeah, it is no. it is and people mm -hmm. are fascinated by it um, yeah exactly um great so um let's this see. is the weirdest thing i've seen about writing since that one portuguese dude who was for 70 years by himself under different names the entire portuguese uh, poetry scene and he had like feuds with himself in and he was like writing pieces shit talking himself in different papers and everybody was sure that it was just a writing community with lots of drama oh my and God, it was he one was dude making all up. that's, that's hilarious wild. dude i love that's that so that's crazy. so funny um <laughs> that's impressive though uh, also to address the comments I know plagiarism bad is like an old take but apparently these writers who went through college and are doing like apparently actual plagiarism one of them doesn't the person who did the plagiarism doesn't believe she's in the wrong and it's like oh my god i'm being targeted by this awful attention seeker 
So yeah. apparently exactly. we need to repeat that plagiarism is bad. How and she literally admitted to it. videos have yeah. I done about plagiarism? And everybody's like, yeah, obviously plagiarism is bad. Why does it keep happening? It just keeps on happening. Because she's um, bitter and bored. That's my biggest takeaway. <laughs> because if you look at this friendship, if you just look at it at face value, it cost zero dollars to say nothing. Zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could have just not said anything. You could have not been in the group. You could have just let it go. But not only did you have to say something, but you then wrote about it, plagiarized it, blatantly made fun of this person. Girl, you could just shut up. She's annoying. Talk about it in your DMs and move on. Why mm -hmm. is in? That's why I really want to know, like, their actual dynamic as a friend. Like, when they're in writing circles, are Dawn's pieces maybe better received than hers? Like, what is this dynamic on the regular? Because if a Facebook group gets you this worked up about something that has nothing to do with you, shut up. Like, why? Why do you need to involve? Why does it bother you so bad? Even if she is being extra, why does it bother you so bad that this person is talking about her kidney donation? Because you have to be some type of bothered and feel some type of way. And not only make fun of this girl and like be all in her post and purposely not liking them. But then to move to another part of my day, pick up my phone and tell somebody else about how dumb it is. Like I said, you either are really bitter about something or you're fucking bored and I need you, you to find something some, to do. You gotta be some kind of person. Somebody in the chat. Yes. Uh -huh. Ramina oh, so I remember said, and was like, what if Sonia and Dawn are the same person? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think they're the same person because we've seen photos of both of them. But mm -hmm. what if Sonia and Dawn orchestrated this to get more publicity for their later works because I hadn't heard of either of their names before this. I would appreciate yeah. that because this is ridiculous. Like there's a New York Times <laughs> article about friends who got into a fight like this is Welcome. crazy <laughs> oh my you just made me think of something so you know how people get like irrationally angry at like vegetarians vegans and like people that don't drink because deep down they feel like they're doing something morally wrong so they need to like tear these people down i wonder if that's where that level of vitriol comes from because shame will do that and if it could be. Yes, dude, watch the ContraPoints Envy video. She yes. covers this pretty thoroughly about how Envy that is was the really anger that video. someone else has something. Mm -hmm. I've it's seen so many videos. It's not even that, that you want it. It's just anger that someone else has something. It's yeah. fascinating. I loved her video on that. I think that could Ram explain a lot. Ramina Jones had actually pointed out in the chat, there's no miscommunication here. Sonia deliberately did not want communication. When they had it, she straight out lied. These are deliberate moves. Yeah, that's and I true. think that that's she did, she a really did important lie. point to like to look at because mm -hmm. it's not like uh, Dawn wasn't trying to get communication from Sonia, wasn't trying to talk to Sonia. It's not, and if Sonia didn't want to be friends, she could literally say, "Hey, I don't want to be friends with you. I don't like this level of communication," and and or just straight up not respond and not go into those groups and interact if you don't want to interact with somebody you can curate your online experience to not interact with that person she could have just left the group dude she could have just left the facebook group yeah. she could have just left it all of this could have been avoided she could have <laughs> yeah, just where, left where's the, the lie <laughs> I think all right i guess i had not yet asked uh kayla and then we now have two Sarahs on the stream. We have Spike Sarah and we have Sarah E. So <laughs> one her, Sarah has to jump off. So Sarah oh, E can hold go? down the Sarahs. I have to get back to actively working. Well, okay. Sarah, yeah, I'm really going to be on your briefly. Here. Appreciate like, cause, it. Bye, cause, everybody. Cause, Hi, Sarah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, um, I'm only going to be on here briefly because I'm because I'm not I'm, I'm I'm on my lunch break right now. But um, anyway, um. I decided to pop on to talk about the entire plagiarism thing. Um, my yeah. mom is actually an English professor. At, oh, cool. Yeah. So um, she teaches. Yeah. So she teaches freshmen. So that's mm -hmm. who she teaches pri primarily. And she has, you know, had a few conversations with them about, you know, plagiarism and citing your sources and stuff like that. And, you know, it's like, hey, you need to go to the writing center for help. Yeah. And and some of them, some of them straight up just don't do it. So, and she's like pointed it out to them like multiple times and then during conferences and then, you know, and then she does sometimes have the authority to report them. I don't remember the name, like whatever board, like candles, that type of thing. But it's just one of those things. So maybe... 
they think that they can get away with that kind of thing because maybe they haven't been reported to that board that like handles it or like because i remember like when i was in school our like we used um i i went to i went to c- community college and like we used um t- turn it and oh, yeah. it yeah. got uploaded and showed um what percentages matched and like mine tended to be like coincidental like yeah, a lot of school, times you won't get a hundred percent. Yeah, because it's like sometimes you'll use a phrase <laughs> like that's just a very common sequence of words. Like this is defined as this or something. Like yes, that 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 might happen. Or you might use the same quote as somebody else, but you attributed it. So yes, one of my mom's friends was getting a writing degree, and when she quoted herself, she had to so- cite herself. <laughs> okay, some otherwise of the stuff she in would academia, be well, plagiarism. I really hate plagiarism. You guys know I have a vendetta against it, but some of the stuff in academia goes too far. The idea of you can plagiarize mm-hmm. yourself is fucking stupid. Now, if <laughs> if a if a publisher owns the legal rights to your work and you try to publish it somewhere else, yeah, that's not okay because someone owned those rights. So I get it there. But like when you're writing a paper and it's like you quoted yourself from a different page, that is dumb. And I will say that like all the strict things about, oh, this is technically plagiarism because you were supposed to cite it in MLA and you cited it in AP style. That's dumb. That's not plagiarism. You just messed up on the assignment. It's okay. Like so certain yeah. things like that, I will be like, oh, Okay, some, some of them had too much to stick up their far. butt about what is plagiarism. Plagiarism is you stole someone else's work and passed it off as yours. That and is that's plagiarism. what happened in a si- situation, like very mm. evidently. It's why it blows oh, yeah. my mind that Sonia doesn't think she's in the wrong about this because no, you took the letter. You actively tried to change an audible recording once you realized, oh wait, no, this is plagiarism. Oh no, I was caught. It's not. You, you plagiarized consequences for your actions you don't get to be published congratulations you plagiarized right also if mm-hmm. she truly wanted to be a yes. real bitch about it what you do is you put her as like a co-writer or with acknowledgments by and then you're covered legally and you're all, and you're also be a passive aggressive bitch about it and since that's what she seems to love to do um i'm gonna in a second yeah, i'm gonna wrap up the calling you know, portion least, but i want to you know, keep sorry bad. Yeah, at least, you know, you know, yes, she was caught because, like, compared to Rachel Hollis, you know, sorry to bring her up, you know, like, when people said, like, (laughs) oh, you said a quote by this person, and, but you didn't quote this person, instead, you blamed it on your staff, and then, like, my dad, who has published a book, you know, like, he, you know, he's currently unagented right now, but, like, you know, when he originally... You know, he does have a book out called um, Corp- Corporate Gunslinger. And then I asked him about his like editing process. And I said, you know, do you like, does your editor catch things like, okay, does, you know, if something was plagiarized, would they let you know? And he said, yes, you know, because there was one instance where it was a gray area, but his editor said, you know, this area is extremely gray. And then he, then it like let him, then it just let it slide because like most people would have no idea. But like, you know, Rachel Hollis's instance was pretty obvious, you know. Absolutely. Um, so guys, in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to wrap up the call-in portion because then I'm going to take a break and go to the bathroom and then we're going to check out Reddit. But realize I never <laughs> officially got to ask Kayla. Kayla, what are your opinions on the bad heart friend? Well, so here's what I was just thinking about was my perspective, I feel like I used to be, especially in high school and middle school, I used to be like, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank on her name, but the one who got plagiarized from. Um, Dawn. Just kind of like always. Yeah, Dawn. Thank you. God, I don't know. <laughs> We've been yeah. talking about it for so long and I forgot. Yeah. But I feel like I used to be, especially when I was younger and when Facebook was just coming out, like I used to add all my friends to these random groups. Yeah. And I would just be, it would be stupid Facebook's things like the, the real villain here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like the muffin lovers group or stuff like that. It was really stupid. But um, like as a kid, I loved it. And I just, maybe she was in that mindset of like, you know, everyone's on board with me. Everyone wants to be in these groups and learn and I, obviously, like you had mentioned earlier, Savvy, like you are kind of like a, of this mentality of like, you know, if we even have an acquaintance where we're good friends and I consider we're you my friends, friend. And then, 100%. Yeah. And then other people, they don't really have that mentality. Um, 
which is fine. But that's where I think, like I mentioned earlier, it's just a big miscommunication. Like we all said, she could have just left the group if she didn't feel or if she felt like maybe that would have hurt her feelings. Because as we saw later, she messaged her about saying like, hey, I noticed you aren't um, responding or liking any of my posts. Like what's up? I thought you were supportive. She could just have explained, you know, and it's different. Like you could have, like we said, you can have your shit talking group to the side, but um, just like be upfront and be like, hey, I just, I'm not really totally invested. I'm, or maybe I'm just not on Facebook that much. I don't really see it. You can tell little white lies just to kind of like save feelings. But um, just, you know, and I always say with everything, especially with the whole receipts, like mentality yeah. that everyone has these days, if, if, if you were writing something down, especially if it's on the internet, it there's a good chance that it is going to come out. So you have to be prepared. I don't care how well you think you are friends with someone in the DMs. You have to be prepared that this could possibly be public. Um, and if you're okay with that, shit talk away. If you're not, just be aware. It may never happen, but it's always going to be a possibility. So I would just say it, there's just a miscommunication. I feel like she could have just been a little bit more upfront with how she felt. I felt like Dawn would have been more receptive to that. And if she wasn't, well, you did your piece. This is what you said. And you could have had the receipts to say, hey, this is what I said. I thought I was being fair. But ultimately, I think that's what it comes down to it. And then she just took it too far by plagiarizing something. And it felt like she was slightly mean spirited in how she took like the inspiration, like feel free to take inspiration. But I like, how did you not know that she was going to eventually see this and be like, Oh, I'm being portrayed as a white savior. Oh, I'm not being portrayed in the best light. And then you plagiarize her letter. It, I just feel like, how could you not have known that that would have like, come back to bite you? But... <laughs> intentionally done to, to upset her. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Was it an intentional move? I don't know. It was a, a mess. <laughs> Yeah, y'all. So. Thank you so much for coming on the stream today. I appreciate people being willing to come on and share their thoughts. Uh, I know Bad Astro a second ago said you probably won't be streaming still in an hour. Oh, I probably will be still streaming <laughs> in an hour. We're not done with this. We've got more to talk about. <laughs> However, I need to take a two minute break to go to the bathroom. Okay. So I'm going to put on the stream starting song. I'm going to take a quick break to go to the bathroom yeah. and get more I'm, coffee. I'm I All right. Thanks everyone for coming on. Thanks for having us. I appreciate it. Thanks, I would bye. love to be in more streams. Bye bye. Okay, bye. definitely. Y'all, writing stream is tomorrow night on this channel. So if anyone wants to join the writing stream, you let me know. I can also post join the writing in the chat commune. To that. Join the <laughs> yes. writing commune. Yes, too. the commune. Yes. Exactly. I would All right, we're taking a two this, minute break for the bathroom. Tomorrow, we will so. be bye. right back. Oops, right. sorry. I'm uh, bup, bup. There we go. Two minute break for the bathroom, and we will be right back. See you in a minute.
Hello. I'm back. What's up, everybody? Thanks for sticking with me through all this. We've got stuff on Reddit to cover. Because now we are going to go into, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the stream, if you guys remember, Zab was in the comments being like, uh, I posted on the Your Morning Guru subreddit to mention that uh, there was actually a lot of misinformation that's been talked about about this. And there's a lot of stuff that hasn't come out yet. So let's talk about this. By the way, everybody, Your Morning Guru has a subreddit. Uh, in our subreddit, we constantly, we have uh, threads for talking to each other uh, during the week. We have, you can post about articles. You can post about things that we're doing. Some people, we've been building puppets on the show sometimes and we talk about that. Uh, people post their art. We post about what we're talking about on the show. We run polls. We do a lot of fun things and we continue our stream discussions after the stream is over. So you can go ahead and join the Your Morning Guru subreddit if you're interested in that. We're going to be working on doing a Discord soon too so we can do movie nights for October. So here we go. I will upvote that. There we go. So stuff about bad art friend. Um, and this is from Zab who posted this on the subreddit to give us more information. So this article says, I have gone extremely online with this. So here are some tweet threads on various aspects. There's more out there. Just putting some snippets of others research as I may not be able to watch the stream. Not saying Dawn is perfect, but I'm obviously team Dawn. I feel like it's easier to be team Dawn just because plagiarism, like if you're in the writing world, plagiarism is just so bad. So it's like, but I also, there are times when I can understand Sonia, but yes, you don't plagiarize. It's not okay. At the same time, it's unfortunate how Sonia and others, other writers in her group, got sucked into the nasty nepotistic underbelly of literary establishment and a cool mean girls and boys club and those writers and a lot of random internet people were sucked into the narrative of it's far better to be a plagiarist than an asshole than to be cringe again guys i don't mean to be such a contrapoint simp i mean i do i can't help it she's so great uh but she did the video about cringe right and and that one combined with the envy video i think says a lot about the ways that humans interact the concept of like the worst thing you can be is cringe it's better to be it's better to be the bully than to be cringe. Like that's that, and that's not unique to internet culture. That's been how it's been for a while. Okay, so here we've got the first Twitter thread, um, which is a good overview of what the New York Times article did and didn't tell readers. We're going to take a look at that in a second. It says a lot. A lot's been made about how Don Dorland was demanding praise and tracking her friends down to demand why they didn't like her posts. After you look at what she wrote, this seems like a mischaracterization to some observers. Larson's claims that we were never friends seems suspect too, reading some of the exchanges. So let's take a look into that. Also, kidney donors are encouraged to tell their stories. It's true. Just a minute ago in the call-in portion, Amanda, who was a kidney donor was on and talked about how, yes, that is true. That is true. Uh, Dawn does seem like a lot, but I think the Times portrayed her as much more gauche and needy than she may be in reality. Uh, so then we've got their email exchange over here. Oh, and the short story is a court document. Oh, that's fascinating. All right. So let's take a look over here on Twitter. Um, here we go. So this Let's take a look at this rundown on Twitter. Here we go. Boop. Okay. So here we go. Uh, kidney donors are encouraged to create private Facebook groups to help them through the surgery. So what Dawn was doing here is considered normal in the kidney donation world. That may be some context that Sonia was missing. Maybe she didn't know this. Maybe she thought that Dawn was just doing this for attention. But apparently that's very normalized when you donate uh, a kidney. So, okay, so so she created that group and she never shared the letter that uh, Larson, that's Sonia, she never shared the letter Sonia plagiarized anywhere but there. Sonia claims the group contained, we talked about this, how it's, it, it, it's about 68 people. They both have wrong estimates, but Dawn seemed to be closer to accurate saying, that's 20 to 30 people. And Sonia saying, no, it's like 300. It's about 68. So closer to Dawn's estimate, but still not, neither of them were totally accurate. Um... And the invitation to the group clearly stated it was a support group for Dorland to share private information with friends and family. Oh, and she told people they were free to leave if she had misjudged their familiarity or willingness to support. So she did basically communicate directly. I added you to this group. Again, we remember at the time, Facebook had it so that you add people to groups. You don't request that they join. You just add them to it. Again, Facebook is the real villain here. That's, that's what I think. Facebook's the real villain in this story. So... Uh, yes, yeah, so that's what happened. Um, 
And with that, and she told them, you know, you can you can leave this group. You can leave it if this isn't for you. If you don't want these updates, that's okay. You can leave the group. Sonia did not leave the group. She stuck around to lurk and steal stuff. Um, Larson's lack of support and interaction was noticed because she was the only one not interacting with at all, not because Dorland was obsessively monitoring her likes. So that does add a little bit of context to the situation. I will still say it does still a little bit come across as taking social media too seriously. I don't think I would notice if one particular person wasn't interacting with my post just because I don't like check my likes that much on things. It seems it still seems a little like she's taking social media too seriously. But again, after having done such a big thing, I don't think that's that big of a crime. But I do see where that element comes into play. Um, so we've got that. Um, so, okay, so then what happens next? So after some length of time of observing this pattern, that's when uh, Dawn sent Sonia a message saying that she has the option. Okay, so in the message she sent her, she did say, you can leave the private group if you don't feel comfortable being in this group. Okay, so I, I get this. I get Dawn's perspective here because like I've said, I'm a direct communicator. And while I don't normally monitor likes and such that much, if if I did, if I were in her position and had already known there's only one person in this group who's really not interacting with anything, I might think, well, this is one of my friends. Maybe they feel uncomfortable in this group. So she did basically reach out to her and directly say to her, you know, if you don't want to be in this group, that's okay. You can leave. And Sonia intent Sonia chose not to leave. She made that choice. So this is where I think Sonia is kind of the one at fault here. Yes, exactly. That cross country friends with this here. And I think that there are some emails that we're going to look at that show this. Um, it seems that yes, she was asking for the sake of wanting to leave uh, wanting to leave if you're not actually interested. So she wasn't saying like reaching out to be like, hey, why aren't you liking my post? Like my post more. Like, I don't think she was trying to be demanding. I think she's trying to be like, hey, I noticed you're not liking the post. Do you, if you're not comfortable in the script, you don't have to stay like that kind of thing. So that's what's continuing here. Um, so, uh, so then what happened? Um, apparently, oh, apparently, Sonia just didn't reply to this message. She just left her on red. And then Dawn just went ahead and removed her of the group. She's like, okay, well, maybe she doesn't seem to be interested in being in this group. So Dawn actually removed her from the group. Oh my God, this just gets worse. Okay, this is really not looking good for Sonia right now. This isn't looking good for Sonia. Um, a year later, after learning Larson has written a book about kidney donation. Well, it wasn't a whole book. It was one story, but still, I get the point. Uh, Dawn has a conversation with her about what she feels is a growing distance between them and points to her behavior in the group as an example. Okay. Okay. So it seems like Dawn was pretty upfront being like, hey, it seems like there's a distance between us. If you don't want to be friends anymore, that's okay. Like basically reaching out to see where they stand. And I can relate to that. If I don't know where I stand with friendship with someone, I will want to know. I will ask explicitly. So and I, I kind of understand too where Sonia's coming from. Sonia lied. I never condone lying. But I can understand that sometimes our social conditioning, right, leaves us feeling a little pressured to be polite, to overcompensate, to be like, oh, yeah, it's totally fine to, to because you're afraid of hurting someone's feelings because that's what the world conditions us to do. Be afraid, like, don't ever hurt someone else's feelings. And I think sometimes people prioritize that over true honesty. So I'm not saying that I think Sonia was a bad person. I think she was probably just trying to you know, be polite and not cause any issues. But I also think that Dawn was right. She was the one trying to be honest. So I, again, I still see this. <laughs> yeah, as Romina, Romina says, she chose to say because she, she was exploiting the situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Lauren brought this up to my professor. So they think it's an absolute mess. <laughs> Yeah, and as ACP brings up, I don't think muting a group was an option in 2015. And that's a thing we need to remember, too, is that social media has evolved a lot in the past couple of years. Uh, she is evolved a lot in the past couple of years. So sometimes we can forget. Um, rainy day, I completely agree. Uh, yeah, maybe I should stop. I, I try too hard to give benefit of the doubt sometimes. Maybe I should just stop. Maybe I should just be like, fuck Sonia and her two kidneys. Like, I was <laughs> I just know everyone's always like, oh, I come to Sally Savvy for a balanced and rational critique of things. And I'm going to be like, fuck Sonia and her two kidneys. 
<laughs> but uh yeah yeah okay so so okay so after this she she reached out and was like are we still friends so larson apparently she did reassure her she said i value their friendship and nothing's wrong between okay so okay sonia explicitly told dawn i value our friendship nothing's wrong between us so yeah okay so 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 sonia lied she lied she lied okay she lied uh not cool not cool at all don't lie to your friends not cool rk says that he lies to me but at least he's honest about it <laughs> that's the conversation we had he's like oh yeah i'll always tell my friends i like their writing and i'm like what if you don't and he's like i'll lie to my friends but i'm honest about the fact that sometimes i lie to my friends and i'm like oh, whatever you say but you know what that's different i think um so yeah so sonia sonia fucking lied dude she lied she was over here like um yeah okay dawn reached out do you still want to be friends sonia's like yeah of course we're still friends i have no problems with you but meanwhile she's plagiarizing her work and shit talking her no no sonia lied okay dawn is not even being cringe now now that there's more context like dawn doesn't even seem to be being that cringe like she's just over here literally asking dude are we still friends she was lied to and made to believe that what else could she have gone by um rk oh you're still here i love you bud okay um yeah singing why the fuck you lying over here how about that um uh so then the article then took all of the above and reframed it as dorlin is sending multiple emails to larson asking for likes on facebook yes yeah, so the article did portray dawn as a little more cringe than it seems she actually is um so now now to the public sonia and celeste and all of them are like oh we we never we barely knew dawn like we weren't even friends with her we barely knew her so they're just fucking lying so we've just got some lying yeah we're saying why the fuck you lying over here so this they were lying um so larson was the first one to sue and this is a thing that the new york times article doesn't tell very clearly it makes it sound like dawn first sued for plagiarism no, I believe Sonia sued first for defamation because of the fact that Dawn was accusing her of plagiarism. So Sonia's like, not only did I plagiarize you, but I'm going to get mad at you for talking about the fact that I plagiarized you because it makes me look bad. Um, no, rainy days. I don't think Dawn trying to be an opus and honest communicator is cringe. I don't think it's cringe at all. I personally don't. I'm saying that I think some other people might think that. I'm just trying to judge based on social situations that I've gotten myself into in the past that I've learned that I picked up on the social cues wrong and trying to learn from that. I could be totally wrong though. No, I don't think Dawn is cringe. I think the article portrays her as being cringe because it portrays her as being like emailing directly being like, why aren't you liking my Facebook post? Which is a little bit aggressive, but that's not really what she did. According to this, it was portrayed more dramatic than it really was. Um, uh, do, do, do. So it says here, Yeah, okay, so dude, this this post is great. This post has all the real stuff on it right here. So it says, Larson is not only suing Dorland, but also Dorland's lawyer for being her lawyer. So Dawn did post a lot on Facebook about her kidney donation, but it's because she's a kidney donation awareness activist and kidney donors are encouraged to be vocal about their donation in order to raise awareness. There's a critical shortage of kidney donations in the U.S. While Sonia and her friends were busy mocking Dawn for being cringe and attention-seeking for attending an event celebrating her kidney. Okay, that was weird. In some of the DMs, it was like, Guys, can you believe Dawn posted about the kidney donation awareness event she went to? How stupid. Why would you why would you talk about going to an event for kidney donation? Like this is just mind blowing. Like I said, it reminds me of the 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 failed Nick Cannon diss track against Eminem where he tries to diss him for raising kids that were fathered by someone else. And it's like, um, yeah, just diss someone for doing a good thing. Yeah. Oh God, you're a nice person. That's wow, bro. You're a nice person. Ugh, that's a little weird, right? <laughs> R slash am I the bad art friend? That's what I'm gonna ask all the time now. Am I the bad art friend? <laughs> um so okay, so that's that's kind of uh the the big point that happened there. Um so that's one Reddit thread. We've got more. We've got more, guys. The Kidney Gate account is here for us. I love the Kidney Gate Twitter account. Um, what is this one? Is 
This is like, you know those things that are like, fellas, is it gay to have friends? That's what I feel like this whole thing is. Like, uh, you donated a kidney? Okay, bro, you did something nice? All right, whatever you say. <laughs> right, and that's the thing, Toilet Frog. I think that people feel cringe because they expected Dawn to infer that she and Sonia weren't good friends. And this is why I relate to Dawn so hard. Because I can't infer these things. I can't pick up on these things. I'm just... I'm just terrified that I had friends who felt this way about me the whole time. This is my nightmare. Okay, so Dawn. <laughs> Let me drink some coffee. Hold on. Okay. So, um... Oh, Leah says, I'm very behind in the video, but thank you for giving attention to organ and marrow donation. I'm learning a lot. I'm glad. See, that's the thing. Out of all of this hot mess, what I'm glad about is that people are talking more about organ donation. Hopefully it'll inspire people to know that they can donate their organs while alive. Um, so, do, 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 do. Um, so, Don sends Sonia an email in 2016 that says, Hey, Sonia, I know you're at whatever event, but I wanted to reach out to you because you're important to me. I think you're aware. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Here's the actual email correspondence to show what that Reddit thread said. Dude, people on Reddit are wild. People on Reddit are like on the case. This is like, they're just like, oh man, some drama came out. Let me fact check every angle. Let me get the receipts. Oh, they're all about the receipts, dude. Thank you. Randy is saying social cues are hard. Social cues are hard. I completely agree. Okay, so Don sends Sonia. So this, I believe, this is the email that Don sent to Sonia to ask her about uh, their correspond about the fact that uh, Sonia hadn't been interacting in her group and to see if they were still friends. Um, so Don says. Uh, hey, Sonia, I know you're at this event, but I wanted to reach out to you because you're important to me. I think you're aware that I moderated a discussion on Facebook yesterday. Uh, someone might have been the proxy, but which was part of, which was in part about the disagreement we've had. Seeing so many stories now of appropriation, I'm ready, ready to let this one go, which is borderline at best go. The situation you've confronted me with has surfaced many intellectual questions about empathy and the humans behind our observed fictions, material that I will mull over and write about for some time. So that's good if painful to get there. I'm still surprised that you didn't care about my personal feelings as much as I would have thought. I'm bewildered about why you didn't just tell me the many times that we interacted this year that you were working in this area fictionally. I wish you'd have given me the benefit of the doubt that I wouldn't interfere. I'm also uncomfortable, as I've said, about your using access to my info about my donation process and outcome on Facebook in the closed group. It was a private group, but not supporting me in my gesture in any way that was apparent to me as a friend, which is why I eventually removed you from the group. So yeah, she removed Sonia from the group. Sonia wasn't interacting in the group. She removed her from the group. So Sonia wasn't even getting bombarded in the group that hard. If you'd like to mend things, Sonia, please let me hear from you. I'd offer to get on the phone, which is best, but I'm having surgery tomorrow and teaching a seminar, th seminar this weekend, so email is better at this time. And then, sh uh, uh, do, 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 do. so then we've got, and then here is Sari. So Sari is this person, right, where she says when she moderated the discussion on Facebook, Sari was the person who was there um, for Sonia. And here's what they talked about in the DMs. Here's sorry in the DMs. Have you seen Dawn's latest post? It's ostensibly about connection and social responsibility in this special time of year. But it's really about her donating a kidney. It's unbelievable. Here's the money quote. I sent my kidney into the void with no certain outcome, partly to say that we have the power to make decisions based on hope, not fear. I thought she sent her kidney into the abdomen of a religious dude with lots of kids, not into the void. How's the void going to use her kidney? kidney also like dude sorry why does sorry 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 i'm not sure how to say your name why is she being weird about this dude being jewish like that's a little that's where's the red flags emoji to come up for that <coughs> <sighs> sorry i just swallowed weird it's not covid one second <laughs> um so then Sonia replies, oh my goodness, I just read it. It really is incredible. She just can't stop being herself. So that's where she talks about, you know, oh my God, don't just be, okay. And then Sari says, it's insane. I mean, it kind of creeps me out. Uh, so why does it creep you out that she's sharing information about donating a kidney? Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh 
my goodness. Oh, wait, this this is all. Oh, shit. Kindy Gate. Hold up. Let's do all. Let's go through all the email correspondence. We're going to go through all of it in a second. I just want to pull up this Reddit thread again um, the, that Zab posted. Um, so then there's the letter, the plagiarism. Oh, now we've got Twitter stuff that shows Sonia being a liar. Um, and then we've got some people trashing. Oh, dude, Zab is MVP today. Um, and then we're going to take a look at all those tweets. Um, yeah, and then we can talk about, okay, so yeah, basically, because we were discussing the white savior angle earlier, uh, as this person on Reddit posted, Dawn didn't write about her kidney donation in ways that other writers thought was cool, but the narrative Dawn is a white savior and racist just took off without much to back it up. Some people have said, yeah, maybe she has a savior con but an anonymous kidney donation that happened to go to an Orthodox Jewish guy whose wife then donated the kidney to a recipient of, we don't know what race that person is. Um, like how were her impulses white savior? This thread doesn't just, it touches on that a little bit. Okay. So, okay. Wow. There's a, there's a lot to this. So, okay. Hold up. We got to go back to Twitter. We're going to get the receipts, getting the receipts on Twitter. Um, here we go. So this is interesting because I started this off being like, I'm slightly teamed on, but I don't want to go into this too biased. Now, after reading all this, I'm like firmly teamed on right now. I'm like firmly teamed on right now, but I don't want to be biased. That's the thing. But like, so far, everything is pointing to Don being the one in the right here. Um, gr oh, awesome. Grim Goose Girl. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. Uh, Christina says, creeps me out. People just reach for the top shelf descriptors without thinking about it. You're creeped out of, yeah. How is that creepy? It's not creepy, dude. It's not creepy. <laughs> ah! Anyway. All right, let's continue. Okay. So it says, for those interested, here is Dawn and Sonia's very first email exchange about the kidney story in chronological order. So this start, this is where she first reaches out about the story. Dear Sonia, I remember that you'll be off soon to a conference. Have a wonderful time. Stay focused and swim in the waterfall. Please say hi to Ty. Oh, see, look, this is nice. It's like a very friendly email. Um, there was one other tip I thought of, uh, blah, blah, blah. So they're just talking about writer stuff. Then she says, hey, I heard you wrote a kidney donation story. Cool. Can I read it? Wishing you a wonderful residency, Sonia. Okay, cool. So she just asks that. Next up, we've got... So Chunky Monkey was the name of the group. Um, Whitney Scherer was the next person who found out about the kidney story. Um, and so this is now the DMs right after she sent that being like, can I read the story? Next is the DMs between Whitney and Sonia. Dude, dude, this, Reddit works hard. What do people say? The devil works hard, but Reddit works harder, man. <laughs> They're just gathering all these receipts, dude. This is crazy. Um, so Whitney says, um, Oh, this is the one where Whitney is talking with uh, Sonia about how they were at the UCLA kidney transplant uh, event, or that they were at a kidney transplant event, and uh, she took a pic uh, with a surgeon. Um, and then they're making fun of the fact that she's talking about that. Well, this seems very stupid to make fun of. Sonia finally replies to Dawn. Hello, Don. It's good to hear from you, and I apologize for the delay in responding. I've been at Warren Wilson for the last two weeks, and I'm back in the real world. I do leave for this thing on Sunday, and I'm excited, and they're talking about writer stuff. Great. She says, I have indeed been writing a story about a woman who receives a kidney, partially inspired by how my imagination took off after learning of your own tremendous donation. What got me thinking was this question. What would happen if the recipient of such a life-saving gift wasn't particularly grateful to get it due to ongoing shame, pride, anger, etc.? or couldn't express gratitude or didn't want to. In other words, how does a person adequately thank someone for literally giving her life? How does one even begin to express that? I have no idea, but I started writing a scene of a kidney recipient at Target shopping for a gift for her donor that might somehow convey all her feelings. Okay, it sounds like, it sounds like the at Target thing threw me off. I'm like, is Sonia at Target, like walking down the aisle, like dictating the scene to her phone? Or is the kidney recipient at Target? At first, it sounded like she received the kidney while at Target, like she's at Target. And then to someone, she goes up to like the Target kidney re recipient counter. <laughs> You're supposed to be a writer, Sonia. <laughs> no, I won't make fun of people's writing in emails. I write like shit in emails and on social media and stuff. That's not a valid reason to, no, nah, it's all good. That's just a joke. 
anyway, let's continue. Um, okay, so, uh, so she says, and I've been working on the story from there. I find those questions so fascinating and no doubt you've encountered them in real life yourself. I hope it doesn't feel too weird for your gift to have inspired works of art. But after I heard your story, I found myself captivated by other kidney donation stories and went to learn more. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. what a tremendous world it is encapsulating so many high stakes questions of life and death, giving and receiving, feeling deserving or undeserving and the connections deepened and complicated among all the people involved. At any rate, I'm still working on the story and don't feel quite ready to show the full thing to people, but I'd be happy to send once it's finished. Thank you for asking and have a wonderful time. Dude, this letter is very detailed and friendly. Like she's like, we're not friends. We barely knew each other. We just write each other very lengthy emails to talk about our writing process. Oh, fuck off, dude. Fuck off. All right, so Dawn replies. Hey girl, have an awesome time. Try not to pressure yourself too much. And thanks for catching me up on your kidney work. I admit, I was a little surprised to hear you'd been working on something like that since we're friends and you hadn't mentioned it and you hadn't seemed interested in joining my Facebook group or interacting with my story too much. Maybe I got the wrong idea there. But of course, it's very flattering for the gesture to already be finding its expression in art. Indeed, many of your same questions are what fuel my own advocacy, which is at its center it is a sense that we all deserve such gifts. Okay, cool. Sounds good. She even was like, you didn't really seem interested in interacting in the group. So I thought maybe you weren't interested in kidney donation, but I appreciate it. She seemed didn't seem too mad about it. Um, oh, wait, we, we already we already read that one. Um, we read Oh, we read this one. So then Sonia replies, my memory is that I did indeed join the Facebook group. Either way, I want to emphasize that my story is not about you or your particular gift, but about narrative possibilities. Um, so she talks about that a little bit, and then they, she just goes on. Um, I think we read that one already. Then Dawn responds the same day and says, um, Dear Sonia, I appreciate all of your correspondence on this. And yes, I agree that your process of writing fiction sparked by my or anyone's donation needn't have anything to do with me or my particular situation in an artistic sense. I'm talking about what this feels like having disclosed my intent to you to donate as a friend. It's the interpersonal layer that feels off to me, Sonia. Okay, here, so she's being direct. I appreciate that she's being direct. And I think may, I think a lot of times when someone is direct about their feelings with another person, it makes the other person feel threatened. That's what I've noticed because I'm very direct and then other people get to be like, wait, whoa, why would you say that to me? Because we almost have this expectation that people are just going to pretend everything's fine, that people are going to engage in pleasantries. But Sonia's trying to be honest because Sonia has been explicitly like, yeah, we're friends, we're all good, everything's good, I promise, we're good. So... Dawn says, it's the interpersonal layer that feels off to me, Sonia. If you check Facebook, I think you'll see that I messaged you about staying and participating in the kidney group ahead of my donation, and you didn't respond. I assumed at the time that you might not have seen any of the private kidney posts. You just confirmed that you did. I was confused about the radio silence. I wrote you an email, I think, last July, and you seemed not to be aware of my donation until I pointed it out. I was giving you the space to not endorse my choice if you didn't want to. I did get some strange reactions. But if you had already kicked off your fictional project at this time, well, I think your behavior is a little deceptive, at least weird. Add to that Tom Meek tagging you on Facebook recently with the question about the inspiration for your story. You didn't respond, though remained active. It makes me uncomfortable that we're only having this conversation because I initiated it. How would I have found out about this otherwise? Put yourself in my shoes to see a friend publish a story inspired by something you did without her really supporting the actual gesture, nor disclosing that she was working on a story inspired by your own. Would that feel great to you? Upstanding? Exploitative? Of being deserving, I mean that I feel anyone being medically cleared to receive a kidney is deserving. There are a lot of other projections, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then she continues about that. I appreciate the directness of it. And then Sonia, oh, wait, this is the one about the, this is the, that's the, her email to Audible being like, oh, shit. Um, Sonia emails Dawn and says, I'm sorry you feel this way. It's not my intention. I want you to know that I absolutely support your donation. I think it's tremendous. Before this email exchange, I hadn't considered that my individual vocal support or absence of it was of much significance. And I hadn't thought of myself as in a position to endorse or not endorse. I was simply interested to read whatever updates came across my feed. But if you have indeed been wondering about my support, I can totally see how my silence could make you feel that something is off. That is certainly not my intent. Intent. As for my story, I disagree that not telling you about it while I'm working on it is somehow in the wrong. It is a work of fiction formed wholly by my particular imagination. Thanks to you as well for the correspondence, and I wish you well in your work too. Okay. 
If she hadn't plagiarized, this probably could have been okay. Um, and then Dawn's like, girl, start apologizing. Wait, where did that go? Where'd it go? There we go. She says, dear Sonia, that's cool, Sonia, but not an apology for which I would have been grateful. Though you have consistently reverted to art as a defense, I have stressed that this interaction has upset me as a friend. You have not responded to my key question, how you thought I would feel when I eventually found out. I see you resorting to passivity as a defense, but here was a friend entrusting something to you, making herself vulnerable to you. At least the conclusion I can draw from your responses is that I was mistaken to consider us the friends that I did. So basically Dawn's asking directly, were, were we friends like I thought we was? Or or do you not really see us as friends? So that's basically what she's asking. Um. So yeah, and I'm going to agree with Rainy Days here. It does seem like Dawn tried to give her an out multiple times. And Sonya just could be like, no, we're friends. It's cool. I promise. It's cool. Uh, okay. Um, so she says, as for fiction, I maintain humbly that I am deserving of empathy in this situation too. I trusted that someone with your heart and fictional muscles would see that eventually and hear me, which is why I bothered. I wanted no part of your story project only to understand why you misled me or a simple admission of a mistake. If that's what in the rear view, you could admit that it was, but you've known what was going on in your mind for a year. I've only just caught up. I have confided the situation discreetly to several people, including writers, to make sure I wasn't reacting defensively. And despite the heartache and disappointment of your news this week, Sonia, I've ended in a strong place intellectually. And so the art wheel turns again. If I write about it in either my current memoir project or an essay, I'll let you know. Um, so then that was the one we already read that. Um, then Dawn sends this email to Sonia. Dear Sonia, am I correct that you do not want to make peace? Not hearing from you sends that message. Please let me know. I am concerned first and foremost to lose you as a friend. I had considered you a good friend. And there was the heart of the problem, right? Don considered Sonia a good friend and Sonia seemed not to feel the same way. Although Sonia had many opportunities to make her feelings known and she continued to lie to Don and say, no, we're friends. I promised. Um... So then uh, Dawn continues, I'm also concerned about the climate between us as we continue to work together and see each other at the Muse, which I believe is the conference or the writing association that they both belong to. Fellow writers in the Grub Street and other communities and maintain a shitload of mutual friendships. As I said in my messages yesterday, I'm ready to let this go, but I need to hear from you in order to mend this. It's another small courtesy that I seek. So Sonia responds. She says... Aaron brings up a good point. Uh, Sonia should not have plagiarized Dawn's letter, but I don't think she owed it to Dawn to tell her she was writing a story inspired by her. I don't think she owed it to her in like in a writer ethics sense. I think I can understand why Dawn would feel she owed it to her in a friendship sense. Like if one of my friends was was like, let's say, you know, I I'm I uh, I host a morning show every day. You guys know that. And that's a big part of my life. But most of my like IRL in real life friends don't watch it. And that's fine. They don't have to. I don't expect to, the, I don't go, I don't go to their work. You know what I mean? That's fine. Um, but if one of my friends started writing a, sh a short story about a YouTuber who hosts a morning show and they were, well, who I consider to be a very good friend, there would be nothing ethically wrong with them doing that without telling me about it. But it would just make me feel as a friend, like, wait, this is the thing you didn't even seem to care that I was doing, but like, you're writing a story about someone doing it. So clearly it is something you're interested in. And I thought we were good friends and we share our writing with each other. So why didn't you want to tell me? Like, it would make me feel a little bit like, wait, where's this, where's this friendship going? So again, I, again, I don't think she owed it to her in like an ethical or artistic perspective. Like, I don't think it was necessary from a writer standpoint, but again, I'm not here to police other people's friendships. I just know I personally would want a friend to tell me, but again, I'm not here to police other people's friendships. People, um, Oh, apparently Romina has had consistently phenomenal takes. I believe Romina has as well. Let's see. Sonia thought she had everything to gain by staying. Why leave? She forgot Dawn was an actual person who could retaliate, not just a character in a story. It does feel that way. Yeah. Um. So, so Sonia says in an email to Dawn, I definitely understand how learning of my story and not from me could make you feel uncomfortable. For what it's worth, I was indeed planning to tell you about the piece, should it ever be published, to assure you that while it's structured around a donation, it's certainly not about you or your story. But that hasn't happened, and I suppose that the would-have-done-it gesture is moot now. I feel regret that this is playing out in this way. Um, 
Let's see. I myself have seen references to my own life in others' fiction, and it certainly felt weird at first, but I maintain that they have a right to write about what they want, as do I and as do you. I think that nonfiction bears more responsibility, but that's not what I'm doing here and I don't plan to. If you ever do read the story, I hope you'll see that it's not actually about a donation. I know close to nothing about that experience. Instead, it's about race, shame, grandiosity, addiction, things that I'd guess are not a part of your real life story, but they are a part of mine for better or worse. And this fiction, all my fiction travels inevitably toward my particular struggles. Perhaps we're talking past one another, re-art and friendship because we see their connection differently. For me, honoring another's artistic freedom is a gesture of friendship and of trust. At first, I read your emails as an attempt to control how or what I write, which runs directly counter to what I value in art and what I value in friendship. So again, this is if, if there had been no plagiarism and there had been no actually she was lying and shit talking in the DMs, this right here could be indication that no, this is just people who, you know, people talk about the love languages. Maybe they got the different love languages. Maybe they value friendship interactions differently. To Dawn, it's about being honest and disclosing things to your friends and telling them things because that's what's important in a friendship. And to Sonia, it's about not having to tell your friends everything because it implies a trust that you have of them. But the fact that Sonia then plagiarized it, that that ruins it all. However, before that, I could see where that element was coming in. Okay, so let's see. Um, but upon reflection, I see that you're merely expressing real hurt, and for that, I am truly sorry. I certainly don't want that, and I wish I had I had given you a heads up earlier, had given you the benefit of the doubt, as you say, while somehow not compromising my work in progress, which is what I fear in discussing any unfinished work. Regarding our relationship, I feel frustration in hearing you say that my silence on Facebook shows a lack of support. To my mind, I have told you that I support you repeatedly, and that I think so highly of you, and that yet you say you're still not feeling, feeling it. I'm not sure what to do about that, but we do seem to be miscommunicating in this regard. All this is to say that if you do, in fact, want to write about your donation or the situation or even about me, by all means, go ahead. To my mind, I have already encouraged you as a writer and as a person, and I would not stop now or ever. I, too, don't want to lose our relationship. I hope that we can at least continue in a professional manner and perhaps more. Sonia's clarifying, we're friends. I don't want to lose you as a friend, which goes directly counter to what she said in the DMs and what she did by the plagiarism. So this is, uh, this is, like, this, uh, this could have been, uh, this didn't have to be what it was. That's my point. Um, and then Dawn, you know, took her words at their face value, as I would do too, saying, Dear Sonia, thank you. I'm so relieved to get this message. I really hope we can remain friends. Your email gives me confidence that we can. So Dawn's basically like, yeah, we're good. Okay. I'm glad to know we you value our friendship as much as I do. We're good. Little she knows Sonia was lying. Okay. I think we both understand by now how this particular art life situation was convoluting, convoluted by my having invited you as a friend to private information about my donation ahead of the donation itself. Yes, I was confused by your lack of participation in the group on Facebook. And when I messaged you about it, you didn't respond. Um, I do. Did I read this one already? I don't know. Anyway, basically, she's like, yeah, here's my thoughts on it. We're good. We're good. Um, so it's supposed to supposed to be all good. So that's that exchange of their emails, which I can see why Dawn thought they were friends as Sonia was like, yeah, we're friends. So she said it to her. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, Irreverent Reader says, this is why it's hard as a neurodivergent version to trust neurotypical people. There's an expectation of subtext, but then she's lying about it too. Exactly. And th this is the thing. I'm just going to clarify for the, the fifth time. I do not know for certain if either of them are neurotypical, if either of them are neurodivergent, if any of them have any mental health struggles or any, I don't know. I do not know about that. I'm not going to speculate about that. But I will say, as my in my experience of having OCD and interpreting the world very literally, I could relate to this. So I do think that there's a connection and a thing we can learn from that to be drawn there. But I won't. I'm not going to apply it to those people because I'm not diagnosing people over the internet. That is not ethical. Romina says the way Sonia behaved before the plagiarism, though not illegal, was not friendship in any definition. Please, I hope folks see the red flags if you find out someone is degrading you behind your back. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we took a look through those emails. Um, let's take a look. Shout out to Zab for posting this all on Reddit. You're great. Um, so here's the next one. It says, to those following the case of Sonia Larson versus Don Dorland, I pre present you a clear case of Larson lying under oath. On the left, now, just to be clear, I'm not accusing Kidneygate of anything either. I appreciate Kidneygate, the Twitter account. 
Maybe I'll give Kidney Gate a follow because this account is providing all, all the receipts and I love that. Thank you for that Kidney Gate. However, I will say that I believe lying under oath is a crime. So I am going to say allegedly, allegedly, I am not saying, I just want to make a disclaimer. I am not saying on this stream directly that what Larson did was lying under oath. I am not accusing her of a crime not accusing of crimes on the stream, not doing that, not going on the record with any of that. But it's just another example of a lie is what we're getting at here. So um, this is Larson's claim from an affidavit submitted in early 2021. She says, I admit that I was invited by Dorlin to join her Facebook group. And I saw that this, I saw the 2015 letter and took notes from it for future reference. I never copied Dorlin's letter. I did not have a copy of the letter until years later when American Short Fiction sent me a copy that had been given to them by Dorland. Um, okay, so she's saying, I didn't even see the letter till after the story. I, I could not have copied the letter. Here we go. Here's her in the DMs right here. I definitely remember, as this is her DMs to Whitney Scherer. I definitely remember writing down certain phrases from that letter because I thought it was so weird. And I wouldn't be surprised if I ended up using some or phrases close to them. That's the shitty part. The problem is I don't know what they are. I don't have a copy of the letter and I don't remember. So this was after uh, Sonia had left the group after Dawn was like, oh, she's clearly not interested in this group and removed her. She didn't, wasn't there comparing it to the original letter anymore, but she does admit that she'd read the letter and she took phrases from it. She admits it directly. She admits it word for word right there. Right there, guys. Oh, my God. Um, and then here's some of the stuff about the Grub Street Writers Group in Boston. Um, so this is Allison Murphy, who is a uh, an employee from the Grub Street Writing uh, Organization in Boston. And she says, she, Allison wrote to Dawn and said, Dear Dawn, we will certainly respect your wishes and accept your resignation effective today. I'm sorry that you feel as you do. Please know that we spent many hours investigating your claims, treating them very seriously and protecting your privacy. We did all of this in good faith. We wish you the very best. All right. Oh, wait, no, this was from... No, so this was from Eve. This was from Eve. Not, this was, Allison was copied on this. So... Allison Murphy, Eve Bridberg, Chris Castellani, Ian Chio, Don, and Sonia were all working together at this uh, Grub Street writing organization. They all worked there together. And then here is the messages between, here's the text between um, Allison, who worked at the Grub Street writing group, and Sonia. Let's read their DMs. Allison says, have you heard from Don since posting the story? Sonia says, Haha, ha, you mean the recording of it last week? Thankfully not, but I have a feeling that this shit isn't over, as hard as I tried to land that plane peacefully. I'll have to give you the full scoop. Allison says, yes, please, the story is so good. I don't know if she means um, if she means Sonia's fiction story or if she means the story of the drama that's happening. I really don't know, but either way. Um, Sonia says, yeah, Dawn just continues to fascinate me. Fascinate me! She does it in all caps after that. I wish I could zoom, Twitter doesn't let me zoom in. But anyway, she's like, Dawn continues to fascinate me. All caps. Fascinate me if that story is ever published. She is totally going to murder me. And Allison says, whatever. We'll all ice her out if she tries to mess with you. What if you publish a short story collection revolving entirely around Dawn? So that's Allison who works at Grub Street Writers Group basically telling Sonia right here, I have your back. I'm on team Sonia. Uh, if Dawn tries to come after you for this, uh, I, I've got your back. We'll just bully Dawn more. You should write more stories about her, actually. That would be hilarious. What the fuck? What the fuck, dude? So Sonia says, dude, I could write pages and pages more about Dawn, or at least about this particular narcissistic dynamic, at least as it relates to race. The woman is a gold mine. So I think part of the problem here is that um, so I didn't even, I don't think I even brought this up. So Sonia is, um, I believe she is half white, half Chinese and Dawn is completely white, I believe. And, uh, Celeste Ng, who was also involved in this is also Asian. So, so some people were trying to make this like a white versus Asian racial dynamic. It could be, if I, it's because I'm white, then guys let me know, but I personally don't understand how that plays into this at all. And there could be context that we're missing as well, because, Sonia keeps acting like there's a dynamic related to race, but I didn't see it brought into it. I know some people say that like, 
well, there might just be this inherent like entitlement that she feels as a white person to have this narcissistic tendency. But I didn't see that with Dawn. We can like we talked about the white saviorism thing earlier. I didn't see that with Dawn. I could be missing something though. So if anyone has the context on what I could be missing, drop it in the chat, drop it in the comments, whatever you want. Um, so anyway, um, Allison says she really is. I live in fear of falling on her side of the line of the white woman engages with race fence. It all comes off as so self-promoting. Is this Allison saying, I'm white, but I hope I'm not white like Dawn? Is that what she's saying? Is she saying, yeah, I'm white too, but I hope I don't, I hope I don't act white the way Dawn acts. Is that what she's saying? <sighs> <laughs> That's just funny. Um, ACP says, I wonder if that has played out more in their personal relationship that we aren't seeing in the snippet. And that is entirely possible. Even though we have access to the emails and the DMs, we do not have every interaction. We don't have every time these two met up and talked to each other or, or what they said to each other when critiquing their work in a writing group. We don't know the backstory or the context. Was there something that maybe Dawn did or said in a writing group that indicated some type of ignorance to different racial dynamics? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. There could be something more that we're not getting. So I'm not going to criticize that element of it because I don't know what that's specifically referring to. And I don't think if someone finds that, I don't know, maybe there's something more about it there. Um, uh, anyway, so that's, that's that part. And then we've got this one. Um, so Allison then screenshots something from Dawn's Facebook, it looks like. I don't know. I can't really see this here. Um, and Sonia goes, oh my goodness, is this for real? And e uh, Allison says, Eve's comment is my favorite. Not because there's anything wrong with it, because it so perfectly echoes your story. Also, I was moved to make a gesture that transcended the bonds of family, but my story also helps those who already know and love each other to consider a living donation. Girl, calm down. So, okay, so Allison and Eve were both also involved working at Grub Street. So it seems like everyone at Grub Street Writing Group was shit talking Dawn behind her back. Was there, is there something else that we're missing here? Is there something else we're missing? I don't know. Did Dawn say something weird in a critique group event or something? There's so much, but we were reading the DMs. You think that someone would refer to something. I don't know. I think that Erin is right here when she says there are aspects to their relationship that we don't know and we'll never know. Exactly. I think that is true as well. So once we get done with the drama, we're going to talk about what we can actually learn from this because you got, there is, there are things we're just going to never know. Um, Cutie Pie says, I think something white people frequently do that creates uncomfortable racial situations is microaggressions, but that's not thing I see in the emails per se. It could have been in their interactions. Yeah. So I'm wondering if something like that, I think you might be right, but again, I'm not going to accuse Dawn of that because I have no evidence of that. So I'm just saying there could be something related to that because it's alluded to that Dawn see that, that, um, uh, Sonia says that Dawn doesn't understand the racial dynamics, but I don't, I didn't see what she meant by that, but it could have been something in a face-to-face -face interaction or something like that, that we don't get to see in this. So you might be absolutely right about that. Yeah. Uh, but Emma continues, F Sonia in her two <laughs> That's never going to not be funny. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I, I think that there's a, there's some context that we all could be missing as just bystanders from the crowd. Um, so Sonia says, you can't make this stuff up. It's like everything she says is perfectly lovely, but it's laced with this tone and conceit that gives me the willies. But you can't say that out loud without going to hell. And yes, Eve's comment, it's totally like my story. Uh, so then basically, um, yeah. So this thing, that's just the DMs that like, I don't care. Again, I don't care if people shit talk their friends in the DMs, like everybody vents sometimes. But this seems like like it was everybody in these writing groups that was shit talking Dawn. It seems like it was everybody against Dawn. Um, and then we have more with this woman, Allison, over here. Uh, this woman, Allison Murphy, the Grub Street employee who had been egging so Sonia Larson in her attempts to ostracize Dawn, had been roped into investigating Dawn's legitimate HR complaint. Okay, so this person who's been in the DMs shit talking Dawn the whole time is the employee who was investigating her HR complaint. That is a conflict of interest right there. That is a conflict of interest. Okay. Um, 
So Allison says, uh, it's a terrible combination to feel, but I think it's a sign you're doing something right. Sonia says, I hope so. If she tries to come after me, I will fight back. And Allison says, I will join you. So Allison, who is supposedly the person who's supposed to be unbiasedly investigating the HR complaint, is in the DMs admitting, I'm on your side. I'm the one who's going to fight for you. Like, she's she's taking a side in that. That seems unethical from a business standpoint. Um, so... Sonia says, what's good is she recently defriended me on Facebook, so that helps. Um, Allison says, I'm glad she's not your Facebook friend anymore, although I think you should post it to Grub Writers of Color, because the great thing about that is that Dawn came after you. They would drag her. So yeah, again, this is once again a racial dynamic thing, and I'm wondering if Dawn did do some kind of microaggression or something, although I don't know, but it, it could be. There could be something we're missing. I don't know. Um... But yeah, Allison was part of the team, along with Eve, who was also shit-talking her. Oh, dude. God damn it. God damn it. This is crazy. This just, it just keeps getting deeper. I see why people are falling down this whole ass rabbit hole. I see why people are, are falling down the rabbit hole. Dude, oh, I gotta pull up the Reddit thread again. Um... Uh, here it is the reddit thread remove the reddit thread back up Boop. so we've got more in the reddit thread so we just read through all those twitter things right there um grub street management all of that so apparently a lot of people of color have said that this complaint from Larson and her friends diminishes actual racism against Asian and Asian writers troubles in a very white literary fiction world. So yeah, I guess the fact that they're making this about like that is like, no, there is actually a lot of racism against Asians in literary fiction, but this whole thing about the kidney donation is distracting from some of the real issues we got to talk about with this, which I've never been a person that says you can only focus on one issue at a time, but I also get where that's coming from. Uh, so let's continue. Do, 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 do. Let's take a look at some of these. The editor of America's Best Short Stories was nepotistic. Oh, wow. Uh, then there's Celeste Eng. Uh, uh, do, do, do. Okay, let's take a look over here. So this person says, if you're here, you're probably familiar with the Don Dorland, and Sonia Larson bad art friend kidney donor story in the New York Times. But there's an aspect of it that has not really been talked about in this aside about a small claims case Don Dorland filed regarding sexual harassment. So this was in the New York Times piece. This was it's talking about Dawn. This wasn't her first lawsuit claiming emotional distress. A few years earlier, Dorlin filed papers in small claims court against a Los Angeles writing workshop where she taught, accusing the workshop of mishandling a sexual harassment report she had made against a student. After requesting several postponements, she withdrew the complaint. So basically just saying that like people didn't really talk about the sexual harassment angle. Um people saying or like why was it even brought up to say just like she's she's ha she's dealt with courts before like okay yeah it's like why are you even going to bring that up if you're why bring up a sexual harassment case if you're not going to devote the time to it like you got to do that kind of thing justice that's that's kind of the thing i'm seeing um Um, Amanda says, one of the things I think Dan Nguyen mentioned is that other white people egged Larson on quite a bit. Uh, I don't, I didn't, I need to look at the thing with, with him. She was the group scapegoat and punching bag. Yeah, the stream is still going. This story just keeps getting deeper and deeper the farther down we go. And I'm putting off <laughs> working on my deep daves for the rest of the month. I need, uh, guys, two more deep dave episodes coming this month, as you guys know. Um, Roxanne Gay was being mean to her too. That's frustrating. I liked her writing before. Um, so this guy, Brendan, says, Do we even know that she really donated the kidney? And Roxanne Gay says, That's a good question. Is this a Munchausen organ donation? Like, dude, she really donated the kidney. Why are you? What? <laughs> why, why? What's even the point of that other than to just be rude? Um, 
do, 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 do. And then... Oh, and then that's just more DMs about Dawn and her one kidney can go fuck themselves. I think... Oh, wait. Here's here's Dan. Here's Dan Nguyen. Hold up. Let me... As you guys were mentioning, um, let's pull up his thing. Um, so he's a journalist. So let's take a look at Dan Nguyen, the journalist. If I'm pronouncing his name wrong, someone let me know. I thought that's how you pronounce it. Um... Manya, Manya, Manya. Let me know how to pronounce your name. I don't want to say it wrong. People say savvy wrong all the time. Anyway, I went to class and came back, and I'm just going to keep watching from live now. Yes, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. And Molly says, OMG, same. I needed a live after like two midterms. I hope all of your exams went well, and I'm glad that this live can provide a, a nice environment after your tests. Um, uh, Okay, cool. So we're going to take, oh, it's like Anya with an M. Manya. Cool. I like that name. That's cool. I like it. Okay, so this is from Dan, and he says, when you read the actual court documents, I do think the New York Times leaned a little too much into the look at this freak on Facebook angle. Um, so let's take a look at this. I just, the tweets keep going deeper because they're all quote tweets. So this is wild. So this account says, you, an intellectual. Dorland's decision to pitch a story about herself to the New York Times was one of the biggest self-owns ever. Me, casually. Did you see that Larson's decision to strike first with a lawsuit is the reason her group chats became public? There we go. Uh, so according to the Gawker article here, it says the correspondence included in the Colker article, that's the one from the New York Times, was discoverable because of the litigation Sonia initiated against me. And that's from Dawn's perspective. So against Dawn in January of 2019, in response to my invitation in late 2018 to mediate or arbitrate our copyright dispute with a low cost legal arts service. Okay, so it looks like Dawn didn't even want to take this to court in the first place. She wanted to get this mediated and then Sonia took legal action. And then the text got subpoenaed. So it looks like maybe that's the biggest self-own is that so it was like, uh, no, let's 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 take this to court, which then led to all her DMs being leaked. So um yes, so let's continue. So this is what um what Dan Nguyen is saying. So he says, so Dawn the kidney person comes off as a washed up writer desperate to validate her sad existence with Facebook likes, which, okay, but she did deliberately limit her kidney news to a small private group, 30 of about a thousand friends. Obviously Dawn sucked at understanding friendship, but she was sharing private info and someone thought she was a, who thought she was a friend show no interest. Why should they get to see it? She literally invited Sonia to leave and her suspicions that Sonia was lurking for the lulls was right. Um, so yeah, the, this is the one right here. We just read this email a little earlier. She specifically did email Sonia saying, feel free to leave the group. It's okay. Feel free to leave the group. Um, so Dan continues when Dawn heard Sonia had written a kidney donation story. She wondered and worried if Sonia had mined content from Dawn's private group and Sonia chose to lie. In fact, she signed a contract. Yep. This is the one we, this was the one with the audible, the audible email. We read that because that had the audible emails in it. And then Dan continues, but anyway, the Facebook stuff is moot. Dawn believed Sonia's lie. Later she found the truth and was hurt enough to quietly unfriend Sonia and yet for two years didn't bring it up. How is Dawn obsessed? She only went ballistic when she finally saw how much plagiarism there was. I'll zoom in a little more. This is uh, hard to read. There we go. Uh, so he continues, in my opinion, the saddest thing about Sonia is that she got a gift from God. Two years to fix and cover up her major plagiarism. She squandered that gift and she still couldn't stop herself from doing some more fuck around and find out. Which you can see here. Um, the, so the thing was that Dawn, whenever Dawn, all in Dawn, all Dawn's emails to Sonia, she signed them kindly Dawn. So they were kindly Dawn instead of like sincerely or thank you or bye. She would say kindly Dawn. And then um, here in the DM, Sonia is like, they're suggesting I change the title uh, to uh, the change the title to willing and able or a person in need. 
I mean, I don't like the kindest. So she wanted to call it the kind, kindest, I think, as a reference to kindly Dawn. And she, she did this here, too. In the new version, every similar phrase in the donor's letter was reworded, but there was something new. At the end of the letter, instead of closing with warmly, she switched it to kindly. So she was trolling Dawn. It says Dawn felt trolled because she used Dawn's normal, which that's not plagiarism. An email sign off is not plagiarism, that part alone. But it basically seemed like she was trolling her, being like, okay, well, I'm going to show that she really was inspired by you. Okay. Um, after seven days of kidney person still trending, civil war discourse sounds... <laughs> oh, my God. So trending, bad art friend, and civil war. <laughs> so this was, uh, yeah, this was Dan Newman's uh, take on this. Um yeah, so this is, this is, that, that's why there's a whole question of this, right? The plagiarism is what makes it a legal question, but the question of who is the bad art friend is a question more about uh, friendship and ethics and what it means for how we interact with people, communicate with people, and the writers in our life. So again, um, my main takeaway is from looking at this whole crazy controversy where, first of all, again, Facebook is one of the main villains here. The way Facebook has you add people to groups and then make them have to leave intentionally facilitates awkward interactions, intentionally makes it hard for people with different communication styles for the sake of Facebook wanting people to just stay in groups and see more of their content and see more of their ads uh, because it's by default. So yeah, so I think that Facebook is one of the villains here. Um, another one of the villains here I will say is the publishing industry. The fact that people were working this hard, had this much accomplishment in writing, and one, are being reduced to high school mean girls. That is a problem with cultural misogyny. And then on top of that, the fact that there were, that they were all making so little money and that Dawn was being portrayed as this unpublished writer. Dawn had to issue a correction. She was like, I'm not an unpublished writer. I'm a published writer. Dawn has had stories published. That and like, it is 2021. If you are a writer, you are published. Like, that's the thing. In 2020, that's not necessarily true. There are writers who haven't published anything. But for the most part, it is, publishing is so accessible now. I personally think if you put out a think piece on Medium, you're a published author. Doesn't mean you're a published journalist, but it means you're a published writer of some kind, whether that's a blogger or an op-ed writer or something. It is, if you have work to put out there in 2021, you're, you should be putting it out there. So there's just a lot to say about like what this kind of says about the way the industry tries to make itself so insular. And so I don't know if I want to have a better word than snooty, but like there is a lot of issues that I've had with the way that literature tries to present itself as this pretentious type of thing that has gatekeepers in place and that has certain people who are deserving of certain things and other people who are not. And whether that has to do with gender dynamics or racial dynamics or class dynamics, there definitely was a class dynamic here that we barely even got to touch on because um, Dawn is from a background of poverty. And in the story, Dawn's, the character that was based on Dawn is portrayed as this wealthy white woman who's, you know, exploiting her privilege to try to feel good about herself. So, I mean, again, you can say the character isn't Dawn, it's fiction, and that's why she's different. But she tried to troll Dawn with so many direct references to her, including her direct plagiarism of her article, and was shit-talking her the whole time. So you have to wonder if maybe that was the portrayal of Dawn she was trying to put out into the world, was like, look at this rich lady who's just fucking with me, when in reality that wasn't what was happening this was a gaslight gatekeep girl boss type of thing so the real yes and i will i will die on the hill that corporations are the real the real villains in this story do i think sonia is a villain in this story i mean yeah plagiarism is never cool uh it's not nice to shit talk your friends but then again we we do know that people are gonna vent in the dm sometimes but the 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 extent of what she was doing made it pretty clear that like this plagiarism was intentional the fucking with Dawn, she knew she was doing it. And that's, I think, where it crossed a line. Uh, but then again, I'm not here to police people's interpersonal interactions. Friends interact in all kinds of different ways, show each other love in all kinds of different ways, and different things offend people at different levels, depending on your own personal values and life experiences and the way you view the world. <sighs> so what I'm here to say is that 
It's the fact that the literary world wants to have this whole gatekeeping type of thing to it in the first place, wants to be this like prestigious club, but only a few people write real literature, only a few people can get into that, it's only for some people, you have to prove yourself, you have to go to workshop after workshop and teach all these things and belong to all these groups and do all these things, and you have to study and get do this degree and, and that master's degree and that postgrad degree, and then you have to have all this stuff out there, and then you can maybe get published in one anthology and make $400 off of it that won't even pay half your rent. Dude, that's a bullshit industry. It's not valued. And I don't have the exact solution. I'm not a person who knows how to overhaul the entire system of how things are done. But I think overall, that's the part that made me saddest reading this is being a professional writer and reading this being like, so these are two women whose work, who, who as writers took their careers seriously enough that this whole thing blew out of it. These were two people whose entire lives and careers were devoted to becoming writers and devoted to becoming something big. Yet at the end of the day, this amounted in multiple lawsuits over a $400 story. That just depressed me about my future as a writer. That's all that happened there. Um, anyway, thank you all for being here on the stream. I am completely, I have no voice left. I talked for three and a half hours on this stream because there was a lot to unpack on this stream. So I appreciate you all being here today. If you have joined the stream late and you have more to say, please feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget guys, don't forget tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, join me on Your Morning Guru, Rachel Oates is going to be guest starring. So if you want more good and productive conversations about literature and literary critique and things like that, no one on YouTube does it better than Rachel Oates. We love her. So she is going to be the guest on Your Morning Guru tomorrow. We are studying the the bad vlog brothers. We studied the good vlog brothers, John and Hank, last week. This week we studied the evil vlog brothers, Jake and Logan Paul. And so Rachel, who has reviewed Jake Paul's book, is going to be on to talk about his book and talk about the process of reviewing bad YouTuber books in general. So please don't forget, you can set a reminder to join us on Your Morning Guru tomorrow morning. That's going to be at 8 a.m. Central Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. I will see you guys again soon. Keep on supporting small businesses, read books by small authors, and uh, 